Okay, today's uh, episode is brought to you by our newest sponsor, ZipRecruiter. Are you hiring? Okay. Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates? Posting your job in one place isn't enough to find quality candidates. If you want to find the perfect hire... You need to post your job on all the top job sites, and now you can. With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post your job to 100, 100 plus sites, okay? Including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. Find candidates in any city or industry nationwide, okay? Just post once and watch your qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use interface. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Quickly screen candidates, rate them, and hire them right there fast, okay? Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 1 million businesses. Not people, businesses, okay? That's incredible. And right now, our listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash idiots. Okay, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash is idiots. One more time, try it for free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash idiots. Okay? What's up? This is Andrew Schultz. Van. Oh, what's up? Come this on, bro. Yeah. I'm, my bad. I, didn't, I don't know how. I normally, y'all just bring me no, in. No, I'm doing the Charlemagne thing. Okay, so and then you I got to do. You do the Van. You do the oh, Schultz thing. I do the right? Schultz thing. Okay, okay good. Cool. Right. All right. What's up? This is Andrew Schultz. What's up? This is Van. Is that your that's impression my, of me? That's, that's how you sound. <laughs> that's how I sound. <laughs> that's how you sound. That's not what's Lefty. Up? That's this how I sound. Van. No, this I'm not van. some surfer, dude. <laughs> Fucking emo punk. What is this? That's how it sounds no. in my head. It goes Andrew Schultz. Andrew is, Schultz. Exactly. It has a little spike to it. You but know? see, I don't. My name has like more syllables than that shit, so I can't do that. What it's Van, van Lathan? So it's gonna be like Van Lathan. Uh, Van Lathan. Van Lathan. See, nah, it's just Van. Okay. The what, first one was the best one. Is wait, what is Van short for? Nothing. Vanguard? No, nah, it's not short for anything. Vandal? No. Is the like, Vandalism? No, it's just Van. My Van? father's name. Van Lathan Jr. Van is that's it. There's that's nothing it. else. That's it. Van Terry Lathan. Van Terry Lathan? Yeah. Wait, your me. middle name's Terry? Terry, yeah. Good. <laughs> No, I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we're out here in L.A. Um, Charlemagne, I think he's calling in. He should have yeah. been calling in for the last, like, 30 minutes, and he's been saying the line is busy, but yeah. we're going to figure that shit out. But um, we're out here today. You know, Van got some very good news, everybody. He got an uh, MRI... And ner- a what? An MRI. I had an MRI done, and I had, like, a... a on his a, brain. On my brain, yes. Not his body, on his brain. On my brain, um, and both with and without contrast, my brain is good. Uh, my arteries in my neck are good, so mm-hmm. we're good to go. Clean bill of health, baby. So, Van, yeah, you had a you had like a lot of anxiety. We've been talking about this the last few days, but yeah, you've yeah, been yeah. suffering from anxiety. Yeah, why? Why you say it? As you say it, you smile. Because <laughs> I also suffer from anxiety, <laughs> so I think I know this sounds crazy, but like I think that when you're an anxious person, when you're around someone more anxious, you like that shit. It calms you, right? Because you're like this nigga's really yeah, fucked up. yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like it's like when you're in the fucking forest and mm-hmm. you're like with a like a fat person and there's a bear. Right. Like you think I'm good. Yeah, I could outrun will, this I'll, motherfucker. This is a better meal right here. <laughs> better <the> meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So we didn't know what was going on. Exactly. So we had everything looked at, and it looks like from all the tests. Is that the Zannies right there? These, he has these like are pills. The Xanax. Zanny got, got look. The Xanax on me though. Van got prescription. You hear that right there? That's not one of Letty's fucking maracas. Okay. We're filming this. We're recording this right now. Letty's oh over here God. with the titties are going. Titties Can I tell you are crazy about, today. Please. About having Xanax. Yeah. Uh, he just said he called and no answer, by the way. Who is he? This is Charlemagne the God. He's lying. Charlemagne making called. things up, bro. He's yeah, just. He's so tell him to use this number because I already called it and it, it absolutely worked. I think it worked. Anyway, tell me something about the uh, anxiety. Oh, you know, you know what's the funny thing is when you get prescribed Xanax, mm-hmm. you know what you find out? What? Just how big of a drug addicts all your friends are. Oh. Because like I got the Xanax, right? Yeah. And at first my shit was like uh like I couldn't get through a morning without them because your anxiety is higher in the morning, right? It is? Because yeah, because whatever levels of serotonin, whatever's in your brain or whatever they say yeah. that is like it builds up throughout the night and in the morning you're 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 wired and then in the afternoon you naturally calm down and shit like that as you ease into your sleep or whatever. Oh shit, so I didn't know it's, that. It's the bad it's the highest in the morning. So when the mornings when it was really bad, I would take a Xanax. Yeah. And then when I would be out and stuff like that, you know, telling people like, "Hey, man, you what? Are you having problems right there? Squeeze it, 
because it it stays on there. It's, it's been in my pocket. Man, the whole time, tell so. tell the story, bro. Anyway, so I can't get this fucking childproof <laughs> shit off the goddamn <laughs> Xanax. <laughs> so no, you around right, and people know you have Xanax, yeah. and they look for like creative ways to ask you for a pill. Like, what was the most creative? Like, it's not really creative. It's like, oh man, you know, I've been dreading this flight for so long. I just wish that there was something kind of get me, man. It's like, well, you know, I got. Damn, can I have two of them? You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah, just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, when they know that you have them, but they don't really know. They're trying to just have one for some, but you need them. Like you need the Yeah, Xanax. they're taking away your life yeah, source like right you here. you need them. So it's like, I'm guarding them shits with my life. But so I haven't taken one in a couple days. Have you sold any? No. You're not selling any? I'm trying to go to jail for some stupid shit. You can't go to jail for selling Xannies. If you're not prescribed them, yeah. If like, you can. If, if I sell that, that's a controlled substance. That's an opioid right there. If I might, if I might, if I sell that to people, like without having a prescription for it, without them having a prescription for it or whatever, like, yeah, they put me in You jail. can sell it. You no, can't sell it. You what if you give it. it to somebody? That's just the same thing. It's probably the same thing. So you'd rather go to jail without making any money. <laughs> That's a bad drug dealer. You are. I'd rather get like what? What can you sell one of these Xannies oh, for? I don't know. Those are not that strong. Like those are point fives. Like when you tell, hear people talk about all that Xannies. Okay, how shit. do you fucking open it? Let I've been see, trying to open it. this for five minutes. Toss it. Like when like that when you hear people talking all that Xanny shit, they, they're talking about like bars and shit like. That. Oh, that's not a Xanny bar. No, How did you open bars. that in two seconds? What, is, man, what is the like, trick to open it? it? You got to squeeze it and then like turn the shit. Oh, okay. Well, well, I, might, yeah, I don't I have to, manly hands. Apparently. I need to be able to get to them if I need them. Yeah. I, I still did not even open it. open it. Yeah. It's still, yeah. Oh shit. This is like super powdery. This is the real deal. Yeah, for sure. All right. Anyway, so you, you get this clean bill health. You're yeah. good. You don't have Lyme disease like Chris Moreau no has. Disease. Chris Moreau probably got Lyme disease. We got a lot of health issues going on on the Brilliant Idiots. Do we? Who else has health issues? Well, I mean, Chris, uh, I think Charlemagne thought he had some health issues. He thought he had some like brain shit fucked up as well. He was getting like a, a test. Work. Yeah. And I think I noticed, because I also had that too. I had a brain exam as well. Did you? Yeah. I went like to MRI. Well, memory shit. My dad is like memory problems. He is like oh, uh, before Alzheimer's. I don't know if I told you this. It's called a mild cognitive impairment. So hopefully, God forbid, it doesn't go towards that. But whatever. He's old. You know, these things happen. He's got the best take on this shit. He's like, what does he, say? he just goes, uh, you know, I'm like, you know, how does it feel? Like you're losing your memory and that kind of stuff. And he goes, eh, it only affects you guys. <laughs> I go. What do you, I go? What do you mean? He goes. I don't know. I just asked you that. Right. You know what like, I mean? Like, I'm no fucking clue. Exactly. It's like I'm learning new shit all the time. Can I ask you something? My, my dad has all his. Isn't it weird to see your parents? When he got Alzheimer's. Fucking, yeah. Your dad no, has no, Alzheimer's. My dad does not have Alzheimer's. Oh, okay. That has other. But that has like congestive heart failure. And yeah, yeah. He like had a pulmonary embolism this past. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, so yeah. like almost lost his leg. Isn't it just weird to watch yeah. your pops go? It's just crazy. Yeah, like they're man. human all of a sudden. It's fucking scary. All of scary. a sudden there was something just regular fragile people. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. It's fucked up. But I was starting to freak out. So like my father, you know, he's losing his memory. And then um, I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but like when you're around people that they have fucked up shit, <clears throat> you start to get catastrophic thinking. You're like, oh shit, could have, yep. you know, could have gone with me. Yep. Exactly, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, basically, I thought I was losing my memory. And this is because you saw it happen. I saw it happen with my pop. And right. then I was also in a horrible relationship at the time. This was like a few years. This so was you like, was like trying to forget so that. I'm bitch. stressed. <laughs> <laughs> you like, hopefully, I'm losing my motherfucking memory. You my memory was helping me. I was like, right. dog, we doing this oh, for you, bro. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, I often thought about that shit though with mm -hmm. Alzheimer's. Like, what if you get you lose your memory as you get older to keep your relationship interesting? Well, what you mean? Like, like what if my dad is like losing his memory so that he can stay married to my mom? Right, so he'll forget all the fucked yeah, up parts. Exactly. Yeah, not only the fucked up parts, but it's like imagine every day with the same person. You're uh -huh. like, ugh. But if you had no clue who the person was, you're like, oh, this is lit. This is cool. This is I'm good. getting some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's not your wife. You're getting pussy that day. Yo, so I wonder, but like when you have Alzheimer's, does it just attack? Which memories get taken out? Did you just short lose? term? Short term. Yeah. So they can actually learn. This is the fucking crazy shit about memory, right? right. You can learn long term shit just through repetition without even knowing that you're doing it. Right, so if you um, literally make somebody repeat, like make an old man repeat the same walk to work or the same everything every single day, right. eventually they'll start in their long term memory to remember how to get from work to their home. Oh, they'll have wow. no Even clue. Even though they're afflicted with it, the, right? They'll have no clue that that's what they're doing. 
They'll just start walking. Wow. And you know how like, I don't know, like when you're back home or even like, even when you wake up in the morning, you go to the bathroom, you don't even know you're going to the bathroom, you right? This go. is secondhand yeah, memory. Yeah, like you start brushing your teeth, autopilot, you go to the car. Like, yeah. have you ever happened almost where like you walk to the car and you realize you don't have your keys, right. but like you're yep, so yep, yep. in the, the flow to right. shit. So you could teach them to have long-term memory. It's just short-term memory. It's just that you ask in like my, my oh, dad. So it's like a workaround to beat the, wow. Yeah, but it's tough because it's like they don't even know there's going and they stop eating. My dad stopped fucking cutting his toenails and shit. That was the picture. Damn. I posted. I don't yeah, know if yeah, you saw yeah, that. I did, yeah, I did see that. And um, anyway, so I, so it's fucked up. And I started I started thinking I had a, I had a fucking memory problem because I was so goddamn stressed. And um, I went to the doctor, and I had I took the memory test. Uh-huh. And I'm freaking out taking the memory test because, <laughs> like, you know, I don't want to. If I fail the memory test, it's you know it I'm fucked over. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like low key almost cheating on the memory test. Right. I'm like trying to find ways to pass. Right. But that only fucks me more. Right. Because if you pass it and you're actually fucked up, then you <laughs> I don't know. Really, you don't know what's really going on. It's like going to get an STD test, but like taking your boy's pee. Right. It's like, why would you do <laughs> Don't you want to know you, you got some shit? Yeah. Exactly, right? So, but I got the test and they said I was fucking good. And, um, that I was crazy to to be thinking, but it's interesting that stress, and I'm sure you realize this, anxiety yeah. can manifest itself in crazy fucking ways. Like yeah. you, can, you, 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 you're talking to the people because I had a really bad panic attack when I was going into my first neurology appointment, like the first time, or actually my second one. Hello. I, Yo. Yo, oh, shit. Oh, oh, shit. Here we go. Oh, shit, boy. I just go. figured out how to do radio shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured that whole shit out. <laughs> Damn. Damn. I'm so proud of me. Hold on. Uh, but Ben was just telling us about uh, his neurological exam that he was going to. Yeah, I know you had went to that shit. I went to it. We're all bonding over our anxiety and, and stresses. So finish what you were saying about that shit. So what I was saying is like, you know, I, I the second time I had gone to a neurologist, I couldn't even get in there to get then exam done because I had a panic attack because I was nervous, right? So, <laughs> so <laughs> you're in the car and you have the panic no, 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 attack. No, 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 They had to call the paramedics to the office of the neurologist. I'm in the waiting room. I'm in the waiting room, and the lady comes out. She's like, "Do you need some water?" And I'm like, "I'm good." And I get there, and the guy, the guy, like puts me on the machine. He goes, um, "What's your heart rate normally?" I'm like, "I play a lot of basketball, so it's normally around 58 or 59." He goes, "Your heart rate is about 130 right now." <laughs> And so I lay down, and yeah. they have to call the paramedics in there. And I'm and, and and when the paramedics hook me up, I'm telling them, even though I've had all these panic attacks in the past, I'm like, yo, we need to go to the hospital. Like, <laughs> my heart is fucked. And they, and they go, no, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to transport you because yeah. you're having an anxiety attack. But when something physical is manifesting itself from something mental, it doesn't matter if it's happened one time yeah. or if it's happened a hundred times. No one can tell you that you don't feel that. That you don't feel it. Yes. That. No one can tell you, yo, it's all in your mind. Because at this point, it's not really all in your mind. Like right. your, your your mind is telling your body to do stuff yeah, yeah. that you're really not responding to. If you feel to. something, it's real. It's real. Yeah, so yeah. if you feel it, it's real. So that that's the biggest part of it. Like when you go to see all these doctors and you get all these tests and they say, yo, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. The biggest part, the hardest part of it is like you just coming to terms with it and you believe in it. You know, yeah. If you don't fucking feel right. But you 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 went and got the test and everything was cool. Yeah, I've had what my 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 primary care doctor calls a million dollar workup. So we're talking about CT scans, like yeah. the whole nine. So flex that TMZ healthcare plan. <laughs> Get that. Exactly. Harvey's but coming. Van, out what of Van pocket. needs to do. What Van needs to do and realize. What Van needs Here to do comes, realize yeah. he's not a fat fuck. See what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, that's all this boils down to. Like Van used to be 397 pounds. <laughs> Why do you keep? It always goes up. <laughs> Yeah, you haven't man. noticed that this is how Charlamagne does it with stories. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't noticed. Man, how big were you, man? I was 360 pounds. That's how okay, much I Okay, and weigh. how much do you weigh? I weigh 230, maybe 225 right Chiseled. now. Chiseled. He's actually in shape. He still walks in the room and thinks he's a fat fuck. He That's thinks everybody's true. laughing at him. That's not true. He doesn't, he doesn't fly on planes because he's still afraid that people are going to look at the fat man coming down the aisle and be like, oh my God, please don't let him sit by me. He doesn't realize he's in shape. That's all it is. And he's in good shape. I can vouch for this. I never even knew that you were fat. I was huge, man. Yeah, huge. I had no clue. Huge. I had no clue. Yeah. And that's the only reason you still have anxiety. I'm telling you. But what about Charlemagne? What about you? You you had to go get a right. neurological exam. You didn't used to be fat. You did used to sleep with women who had fat necks. Whoa, fucking right. No, you, I, my, my, my problem was, I mean, I know exactly. That's the thing about anxiety. Once yeah. you realize what it is that's stressing you out, yeah. 
it's easy to control. Like at the time, I was unemployed. Yeah. I was living with my motherfucking mom in Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Uh-huh. This had this had to be like 2000 and late. No, early. Yeah, it was 2010, early 2010. Cause I didn't get with the Breakfast Club until November of 2010. So, so you were October, living with her, your mom at the time. Yes, I had oh, to shit. move. I had to pack. I had to pack up from fucking New Jersey and fucking drive back down to South Carolina. I had my daughter at the time. My my wife had to go back and live with her parents. I'm living with my parents. So I'm sitting in my motherfucking mama's crib. This fucking deal I had for this artist named Little Rue, he fucked that situation up. So I was just sitting around every day stressing about the fact, stressing on the fact that he fucked this deal up. Like, and it wasn't even about the money. It was the fact that he fucked up an opportunity for South Carolina artists to really get through. Because I had him set up right. Like, all you had to do was listen to me, sign the asylum records the way I wanted him to, and everything would have worked out. So I was, but he didn't want to do that. He wanted to go to Def Jam, and he ended up selling a thousand fucking records the first week. But mm. long story short, that's what was giving me giving me my anxiety. Like I literally went to the doctor, did test on my heart because I used to feel like I was having heart attacks. They said my heart was fine, um, and they was asking me what was stressing me out. Was anything bothering me? And, and it was that situation. It wasn't even the fact of me being unemployed, unemployed living on my mom, because I knew I was going to bounce back from that. It was like the, the combination of all the pressures that was But I thought you recently went to go get your head checked out. Yeah, I recently did go get my head checked out, only because um, I was having, like, memory loss. I felt like I was having memory loss and shit, and, like, mm. like things would just slip my mind so Look, easily. And I've told you this. I told you this the other day when you first told me about this, and this is something that I want a lot, because I was going through the same thing. I want a lot of people who listen to the podcast right now to know our phones fuck with our memory because we're never fully focused. Van is looking at his phone as I tell oh, him this right now. We're, we, Van is, we got Postmates coming. Van is, I know, I know. We're never fully focused right. on the conversation at hand, right? Or right. what's happening, right? Like you, Charlamagne, That's for example, true. you'll probably be in 10 different text conversations at one point in time, having a conversation with the person you're doing business with, right? And yep. thinking about what you're going to do for the podcast and yep. thinking about what you're going to do for Breakfast Club the next day. Yep. So you have 15, 20 different things that you're managing at one point in time in your brain. You don't have enough cognitive energy to handle all that shit at one point in time. Mm. So that's why your memory is literally just spread too thin. So it's not that your memory works worse. It's just you're memorizing more shit than you used to be memorizing. No, yeah, I, I absolutely 360% agree with that because I can't remember shit. Yeah, and it's not, I'm with and you. It's, and it's not even a bad thing. It's just like certain certain information I retain, certain information I just simply don't. Mm. like. And that's the beauty of having like managers and assistants. Yeah, I'd say you have a team like around the people that can remember this shit. For yeah. You. Man, I literally hit Karen the other day and I'm like, so what's this guy's name that we always talk to? <laughs> and, I, and I literally talk to this guy all the time and she was like, such and such. And I'm like, oh, he works for this company. And she was like, no, it's this company. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So the information is there. You know, yeah. you know what I will say? Charlemagne tells the same stories over and over again. Uh-oh. Didn't I just tell you I can't remember shit? Uh-oh. I know, but like if I bring if I bring if, like if I bring up like you know what you can do to Charlemagne? You can tell him a story that he's already told you, but act like you just stumbled onto some shit that like he like you can trick him. Like you like like, like 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 you can see like, like 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 you can trick him. You can say something like blah 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 and Charlemagne will be like Oh shit! Yeah, it's the same. And he doesn't even know that, that he, you already told that, him that no, stuff. He told you that stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. When we, we we was in LA this weekend, and you know it was show's born day, so we went to that little spot. Yeah. And and somebody was like, "Yo, you know the restaurant closes at 11. So I text y'all to tell y'all that. Then I get in the car and turn to the car and go, "Yo, you know this restaurant closes at 11? And they was like, "You know, I just told you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> Okay, Shout out to this low. restaurant, by the way. This was the most extra restaurant in the world for no fucking reason. That shit is trash. What's the yeah. name of that shit, man? What is it? It's Barton G's, the name of it. That yeah. shit Barton is trash. G. So when you get a salmon, they literally put like a like a, a plastic fish that's a two feet long on top of the plate or something yeah. like that. The popcorn shrimp comes in a popcorn, a popcorn machine. Like a movie theater popcorn movie theater machine. Movie theater popcorn. What else do we have? The, the, it is trash. The cotton candy, but it was all regular food. It was that's what you got to notice. I've realized about these places because you even brought up the fucking what is that Knights of the thing? What is it called? What are you talking about oh, medieval times. Medieval times, yeah. Which the food is horrendous. It, it would be better yeah, off with know, no you food. You ain't going there for the food though. But, you're going there to watch some night medieval shit. Bro, you're there for three hours. You're gonna get starving. Yeah, At least give me I bread. Mean, they, they serving food, so I mean, you know, oh, it's unbearable. Yeah, it's bad. The food is disgusting, right? right? So it's just like 
the 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 more theatrical, say, yes. the more theatrical, the bigger deal they make of the presentation, yes. the wackier your meal is about to be. Exactly. Meanwhile, you go to some spots where they put yes. your shit on a paper plate and it's sure. the bombest meal you ever had yeah. before. In your it's life. like one of these like pinup models. Right. Like the fancier the fucking outfit and the bag mm-hmm. and the heels right. and the nails and the makeup and the contours, the worse the pussy's going to be. But if you get one of these, <laughs> honestly, we all know it. They're not going to try hard. They're going to be worried about their eyelashes falling out, all these fucking Trying things. Trying to right? detox tea. Exactly. <laughs> They're like, I need to go post. I need to go home and post. Let's hurry this up, right? But if you get a girl that just walks around in like a fucking t-shirt and sandals all day. Just swimming in that shit. Wow. <laughs> wow. That shit is going to be official. A lot of these yeah, sounds. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, uh, from, from, from my experiences, a long, 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 long time ago, yeah, you got it. Right. <laughs> this guy ain't shit. You the most oh, ain't shit. God. You the most ain't shit. One day we're going to post it. We're going to do a book of inside jokes, too. That's the next thing we're going to do. Yeah. We're gonna release- you know what's so crazy? I, I, I'm, I'm sitting at the crib today. And um, they sent me a letter. You know, they send you a, a, a sample ballot. Oh of yeah, the, yeah, of, yeah. Of, of the election. Mm-hmm. Right. So they sent me a sample ballot of of the election, right? And I'm it's, it's the 2016 general election sample ballot. So I'm looking at it, and it really dawned on me. I'm like, Donald Trump is running for president. Like Donald Trump <laughs> is a candidate to be president. And like I'm looking gap, at this dog. shit. Like I'm like I'm looking at it, and I'm like. Holy shit, Donald Trump is really the GOP nominee. Yep, and narrowing the gap, man. Yeah, like, this shit is not a fucking game. And, yeah, you know what? That It is kind of crazy that you say he's narrowing the gap because I really am I'm a little bit concerned that, that liberals and Democratic voters are going to keep the same kind of relaxed attitude towards voting that they usually have, which is, oh, I live in a blue state, ah, it's going to go blue, or there's no way that Donald yeah. Trump could possibly win, or any of that kind of shit. There's a way. This there is the problem. My home girl, my home girl name is Simone Sanders. She used to work for Bernie Sanders' campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, now, she, of course, she's campaigning for Hillary, but Sell she out. hit me up, and she told me the other day that uh, the, the black millennial vote is so low. Mm. And she was, she wanted, you know, how can we engage them? How can we energize them to go to the polls? Now, this is the difference between what happened with Barack and um, what's going on with Hillary. With Barack, it was the uh, complete opposite. Like, not only were young black millennials energized, just millennials, period. Like, it was the two largest youth voter turnouts ever mm-hmm. when it came to Barack. Now, with Trump, Trump has energized the fan base that usually isn't energized. And that's them goddamn poor white they trash motherfuckers. That the poor and disenfranchised white people that nobody ever pays attention to right. are getting in their pickup trucks, putting on their finest camo, mm-hmm. and driving the to the goddamn polls on the eighth. So I saw I, I saw this quote. Um, I was just thinking about this shit. Let these hear right now. Let these about to take my headphones. But I saw this quote. And um, it was from uh, Lyndon B. Johnson, President LBJ. And he was once asked why poor uh, white middle class, why poor and middle class Republicans vote against their own interests. And this was his response. It was, if you can convince the lowest white man he's better than the best colored man, he won't know you're picking his pocket. He'll give him... uh, He'll give him someone to look down on. Oh, it will give him someone to look down on, and he'll empty his pockets for you. Wow. That's what Trump is doing. Wild done. shit, though, talk. right? That's real talk. I mean, that's what Trump has done. The politics of fear, the politics of separation, and just the, this the, the whole notion that something's slipping away from you. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like um, the, the, the entire notion that something's slipping away from you. And that, like, it, what what you're doing with Donald Trump is you're 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 plugging a boat, you're stopping a leak. You're, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, 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 you're you're stopping America. But explain what you mean by slipping away. White what, what, people what, what, feel what, like their well, hold I, I, on I, America I, slipping away. So, so I mean, not not white people in general, because uh, I don't think that I, I don't think that white people in general are not progressive. I think there's a there's a certain segment of the uh, of the population that saw. Um, Obama's election as a harbinger of something to come uh, uh, of not just a black man being president but uh, a sort of uh, a, a sort of type of liberalism and a sort of type of progressive thought right. that was going to turn America into something that you know sometime the end times prophecy something that they could not recognize anymore Yeah, and a lot of the conservatives that came before Trump um, with the possible exception of Sarah Palin 
were sort of on the line as far as trying to appeal to those people yeah. and also try to look to the future of the Republican Party and think, how are we going to evolve and appeal to the same people who want America to, to, to keep down this this sort of path? Yeah. Trump didn't even try that. No, nah, he's like, fuck it. Trump was fucked that. Trump went to the people who are actually scared that mm-hmm. they are going to walk into a McDonald's and see everybody back there making the burgers with burgers on and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 Yo, like Trump, Trump is actually talking to those people who think Sharia law is about to take over their schools and yeah. will do anything to stop it from happening. Listen, yeah. go, go, go listen to the new TED Talk that's out now. It's about adaption. And it's this guy who uh, he, he, he has this, he wrote this book called like Whitetopia or something like that. And he talks about that. He talks about white people's fear of, of, of the country slipping away. And then he talked about like 2043 when everybody's supposed to be majority brown. But basically he said that you have a lot of white people in this country who aren't even necessarily white supremacists. They're just white separatists, separatists meaning they don't think they're better than you. They, they just, just don't, don't want to be around you. you. They don't want to be near you. Yeah, so like Dr. Umar Johnson. Yeah. yeah. He's like, Dr. Umar Johnson would be somebody who's kind of... Con- well, I don't, I don't want to put... Yeah, I guess, yeah, he'd be considered like a black separatist, right? For sure. Well, I mean, to a degree. I mean, like, like he... I, I think what he... And I'm not about to act like I'm a... I'm a expert on what Umar says but yeah, I, I don't think, want to I don't want to speak for him but, uh, I, can, but I can see that but yeah he, he definitely thinks that there's some virtue in separating if not people like um what societal thoughts and societal behaviors and things like that he doesn't think that I, I don't think that and I don't think that he believes that there's much virtue in the melting pot I don't think that he that he it, it doesn't seem like that's what he doesn't he think it can work if we're all together right and I think that he he, he wants to he, he wants to kind of convince people uh, of of the sort of rules that's being played to them, that's being you know pulled on them, and he, you know that's kind of his thing. But I think that there are people on the, like that on both sides. Mm-hmm. But it, it never, I, I, once again, it, it never really th- 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 that doesn't can, work. Can we can we just be honest for a second here? What Let's, is so wrong about having all of us be brown? Like what? If, like what if we're all Puerto Rican? I just don't think Dominican that's what God had intended, man. But what I, 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 I just don't think I don't think that's a good solution. Like why? What, what, the better solution is what's wrong with all of us being different colors? Yeah. Like, 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 forget everybody. Oh, it's so one exhausting, like, this different why? color thing. It really is so exhausting. I don't want to do it. Like, imagine how much nicer it would be just in the future where everybody's more or less the same color. Uh, man, and then, it, but I'll tell it, you what, though. It, it'd, be like that, it'd be like that Dr. Seuss, uh, I, I, for, who I forgot who it is. You remember that Dr. Seuss story where everybody had an X on their stomach? Or the people that had X's on their stomach thought they were better than oh, yeah, the yeah, people yeah, with no X's. So then they all went through a machine and they all had X's. So now the people who really did have X's, they, they, they looked down upon those people. The, they, the other guys got X's on their stomach because they thought that would make the people with X's accept them. But then all they did was look down on them. Yo, yo, uh, at, look, human beings have a natural inclination to feel better than one another. Right. And they want to do that through the least amount of work possible. So either whether it's classism or racism. Oh, we find we find a reason. Like if you put 10 people yeah. in a room, they might not elect the president. But they definitely find somebody to hate. Oh, for sure. They like, yeah. definitely find somebody. We hate that they people because like. their hair is curly or yeah. their hair is straight. Like we find the most minute things to hate about people. We right. hate people because they have too many freckles. We hate people because they're ha- like it's cra- even through this dating app shit that I've been like dating. Right. These girls are so concerned with height, it's hilarious. Like we'll talk for like I don't know, like a day or two, and eventually they'll just bust it out. Hey, by the way, how tall, uh, are, you? How tall are you? <laughs> Bitch, just ask me up front. I'm six two. We good. By the way, mad people catching syphilis because of Tinder, I heard. I'm not on Tinder. That's why I don't fuck with Tinder. I heard syphilis is running rampant on Tinder, boy. I'm not on that shit, boy. I'm on the good shit. What's the good shit? I can't tell you about that, bro. You don't need to know about that. You don't need to know about Charlotte. You're a happily married man to a beautiful black woman. That's right. All right, but what if I told you there was a dating app that had all Dominicanas? Dominicanas. Yeah. It was straight Dominicanas. What, what if I told you that? Would you sign up? Joe Budden. Well, I'd be like, what's that watch? That Joe Budden. The Joe Budden. Button. <laughs> the Joe Budden. <laughs> the height. Oh. Dot com. Dude, you never heard about the Michael Kors app? Dykeman.com. Michael Kors. <laughs> Dude, the Michael Kors no, app is. That'd be funny as hell. They had a Dominican app and you had a Michael Kors emoji. Oh my God. <laughs> Just MK.com. You got all the Dominican girls you want in your whole life right there. Beautiful. Mm. Um, they, they they announced my book. My book will be out in April. I've been Yo. seeing this, man. The April eighteenth. No, yeah. 
Uh, hold on, let me look at the date. I think it of is course, April you 8th. forgot that you're losing your memory, ass. Right. Hey, man, I, I, I definitely forgot. Let me see. Yeah, it's April 18th. I've seen some. Uh, Andrew remembers when your book is coming out. Well, I know. posted about it today. Like, I, you um, know, I've seen some different places. Uh, I saw a Toronto, uh, some kind of Toronto station or something like that. Yeah, I've seen, page I've seen six, page six in the New York Post, right. Chicago Sun Times. <laughs> a lot of people have been showing their love, but actually, uh, Karen just sent me this thing from Amazon. It's the number one new release in general broadcasting. Oh, what does that know mean? I have no idea, but I'm going to take it. Hell Let's yeah. Go. Now, right. can I just ask you something about the, the title? Yes, Black Privilege. Yeah. Opportunity comes to those who create it. Now, technically, could you be, are you culturally appropriating privilege? No, because privilege is for everybody, and that's what people need to start realizing. So like, are mm. cornrows. <laughs> 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 That's gonna be my book. Snow so, Coon Schultz in the Corn so, Extravaganza. <laughs> corn rolls are for everybody. <laughs> Privilege and corn rolls are for everybody, right? That's what it is. We've created a new America, okay? Oh my god. <laughs> but tell them where they could get it, man, because right now there's some pre order thing. That's what I posted. It was a pre order. Yeah, Oh, God damn it. Hold on, I should know this type of shit, you right? You can pre-order it. Look, it says Amazon, the iBook I store, BAM, Barnes um, & Noble, Go to see the book. Go to see the book. Go to see the book. Yeah, C-T-H-A-B-O-O-K.com. I mean, the book don't come out till April, so I'm going to be promoting the hell out of it. Every yeah. podcast, every radio show. But see the book.com, C-T-H-A-B-O-O-K.com. And you can pre-order on everything. Like every it's, it's it's everywhere. It's on Amazon. It's on Barnes and Noble booksellers. It's available in the iTunes bookstore. It's on Nook. It's on Bam. It's yeah. on Indies. It's on Google Play. Listen. It's on Kobo. And it's the number one new release in general broadcasting Word. right now. And do not let the Illuminati, Nate Parker, see the God. Okay. We they can't know, Nate Parker me. Hey, we know that the stories are going to come out. Yeah, we know coming. the allegations are going to surface. Yeah. Okay. They're going to try said that to me today. I'm like, what? what could come out. Actually, you've kind of been good about kind of getting all that stuff, getting in front of that shit for like the last 10 years and just kind of putting it all out there. So I, if, if some shit comes out now, it would have to be some really fucked up shit. Some crazy I mean, fucked listen, up I've shit. Had, I've, had, I've had people make videos. I've had a guy make a video and say he was my boyfriend and I don't catch the bus to come see him no more. You don't catch like, the bus? <laughs> yeah. You couldn't even get an Uber out there? That's where the story got fucked up. Yeah. yeah. You taking public transportation to, to get a dick? Damn, hey, bro. <laughs> Damn, bro. Yeah. You might want a comfortable seat before you get that ass oh, torn open. Exactly. Who the hell would ride a bus to go get their asshole blown out? <laughs> <laughs> Put me in an Uber XL. Come on, man. I'm going to get my I'm gonna get my ass blown out. I'm going to ride a bus. You're right. You're going to be on a bus of hard ass seats. What's wrong with me? This shit. I like how you're on board with being a bottom as well. Uh, nah. I would definitely have to be a power top. I know, but that shit don't count. Oh, talking about being bottoms and tops, this Airbnb that I was staying out in LA, I don't know if I, I told you that is this. Well, right, no, post. I, saw, I, I dropped you off the Airbnb. Oh, yeah, but did yeah. you see the, uh, you didn't go inside. I did. Oh, you did? I had to piss and I, I ran up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, this fucking, th there's lube, it was in West Hollywood, which is like the gay neighborhood of uh, LA. Dude, yeah. there's lube all over the fucking apartment. All Shit. like and the lube is not like just like oh general lube it's Astro Glide dude gun oil oh what the there was one called gun oil oh that's the name of the lube the lube was called not, gun oh, oil I, I thought they were actually using real gun oil no. <laughs> like, like to like WD forty on they fucking like I'm like that I'm gonna be honest man if you need a lube dog. called gun gun oil to fuck somebody in the ass that's some difficult ass to get it bro that's some tight you booty some loose ass, you got a nice little Asian boy. <laughs> 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 Ain't nobody got time for all that. Yo, oh but God. here's a question I do have. I gotta. I want to ask, like, and I want our followers, like, you know, the people who listen to to comment on this shit too, because, like, okay, so in L. A. and in New York, I need y'all to really listen. To this. I, no, for real, this is a real question I got. In L. A. and New York, there are the two Halloween parades that are fucking crazy popular, and they're basically. Uh, Gay parades, right? Well, I mean, the, the parade here is in West Hollywood, so you, I guess you could call it gay, but it's it's a cultural event for really for everyone. For everybody, but, but it's, it's, it's what, yeah. started by and probably promoted course, right, by the gay right, community right, 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 and whatever, right, right, right. right? And I've noticed that the gay community is super into Halloween, right? Yeah. And here's the thing that I don't understand about it. It's like, 
I just don't understand, like, why when they can dress up however they want any day of the week. Like, if a straight guy dresses up a little crazy, people go, yo, what are you, gay? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, you gay, man. bro? Going, yeah. If you're gay and you dress up, they go, what are you, gay? And you're like, yeah. But it's like, so it's like I don't understand the- I don't, don't want to perpetuate any stereotypes, but it's like, it's theatrical, right? And it's like- like, like, so you think it's acting based? Well, not acting, but I'm, I'm saying like, you know, and once, it, not to perpetuate any stereotypes, but you know, sometimes the gay brothers they like to have a little bit more flair in what they do, right? So Halloween, but that's not is specific. Like all flair, but it's, it's not like specific to one day. Up. It's not like I see like gay dudes, like certain gay dudes dressed, and then go, oh man, they're really kind of toning it down but you don't today. See gay dudes walking around dressed up like fucking Storm. You from don't the for real? Hell yeah. Go like, to the West Village. There is like some they, fabulosity over there. Yeah, nobody like, does Halloween like gay men, bro. Oh, they go all in. The Which best so crazy in Halloween, but like the, for the rest of the year, you don't see gay dudes dressed bro, up like go to fucking... the West Village on a weekend, bro. Okay. It is wild. It's Halloween every weekend. So I, I'm not <laughs> understand. I don't understand why there's this this exceptionalism for the specifically October 31st when you can see this any day of the week. Mm. It's know. so crazy to me too because the Jack and Lantern is like. Like, so not a gay thing. Like, I mean, he's got jagged teeth. Ain't no gay man sticking there, cocking no man's mouth with jagged teeth. <laughs> get some Invisalign, Jack. Yeah, like, what, get a fucking good ass. Jack. I have the Jack Lantern should have no teeth. Mm. <laughs> was like, yeah. yeah, but I'm not gonna lie. Have you ever felt like pumpkin pulp? <laughs> if there was one vegetable I'd have to fuck, it'd probably be, be a pumpkin, pumpkin, bro. I'm not going to lie to you, dude. No, no, no. Are you telling me that pumpkin poke feels like an Asian boy's ass? <laughs> Why do you think I want Asian boy yeah, ass? Why you put that on? If all the asses, I'd probably go with uh, Michael Kors. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, who, which dudes got the fattest asses? What are you talking about, bro? Yo, yo, yo man, we, we know which girls got the fattest asses. Which dudes? Which dudes? I have no fucking clue, bro. That's got to be the dumbest shit in the world. Don't fuck the ass with a fat ass. Say, what? To do what? what? What's the point? What's the point of what? Fuck a man with a fat ass. <laughs> what, 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 you, you'd rather fuck what, a man with a no ass? ass? Like, why, why you want no ass, Charlamagne? You gotta have some ass if you fucking... Listen, it's what? difficult enough. I'm sure sticking your dick in a man's butt. All right, oh now you got all God. these cheeks. I don't want no cheeks. You want to go straight to the start. <laughs> <to the cheeks. laughs> you want nothing in the way. I just want the hole. I don't want no cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Dick talk. <laughs> the return of Dick Talk and Dick segment is sponsored by the Gay Halloween Parade in West Hollywood. Okay, let's take a break for a second. Pay these bills. We'd like to thank Squarespace again for supporting this week's episode of Brilliant Idiots. Building your online presence doesn't have to be difficult, okay? We tell you this week in and week out with Squarespace. At the reins, it's downright simple. Design a beautiful website with Squarespace's award-winning templates and customizable settings, all without a single plugin. Squarespace is trusted by hundreds of thousands of shop owners around the world. Their seamless commerce tools provide you with everything you'll need to track inventory, process orders, and send custom emails in one intuitive interface. Squarespace even offers 24-7 customer support. Every member of the customer care team is an experienced Squarespace user working in a Squarespace office. No matter how technical your problem or trivial seeming your question, one of their team is always online to assist you. Squarespace is even teaming up with Google to make it easy to build your online presence and get the word out to millions with the ease of clicking that mouse. So start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter the offer code IDIOT to get 10% off your first purchase. Again, go to squarespace.com and entering offer code IDIOT gets you 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, set your website apart. Trash ass show we did in Anaheim. Oh no, we haven't. Oh my <laughs> god, dude. Sorry, you, know, you guys said it was trash. I liked it, I, I, but you I, haven't seen us get down. That's true. You know, you haven't seen what we do. I'd like to apologize to the podcast festival in Anaheim. We just had an off night. You know what we did? We we we. You know what I want to do? Everybody who came to that to that show, you got to let us know when we're doing another proper official show in LA, and we're gonna make it up to you some way. But um, yeah, it was just. There was just a bunch of things that were kind of weird about the environment. You described the environment the best. You said that shit looked like uh, they were selling timeshares. That's exactly what it felt like. <laughs> it felt like they was all in there because they, they had to sit to the presentation of the damn timeshares just to, just to get their free vacation. Yeah. 
I still think there were some classic moments though. Look, when the two really? ladies when the two ladies got up and walked out after Andrew was talking about fucking the pussy or something no, like he, that. Charlamagne said something about he goes, Yeah, something about the pussy penetration. These two <laughs> old <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire looking got bitches out. got up and walked out. <laughs> and, 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 oh, we lost two. The pussy <laughs> penetration was too much. I was dying in that moment. Yeah, we had a couple of people that didn't know how the brilliant idiots get down. They were right. definitely in that, you know. It was just in there for different podcasts and stuff like yeah. that, and they, they wandered into the wrong room. So yeah, they walked in there because they liked the logo. They liked the logo, and they, they said, this, this sounds interesting. Yeah, they heard your name. They're like, this is going to be European. And we talked about pussy for 30 minutes <laughs> right at the time. <laughs> so we're coming back with a vengeance the next one for sure. We're going to come a little bit more organized, get our shit together. We should have at least thought of some topics to discuss before. We, we definitely, we got a couple coming, right? Yeah, we got Boston. Oh, that's right. We got Boston. Uh, Boston yeah, the we're gonna do the Wilbur Theater in Boston, and we're gonna we're gonna rock that out, man. Thank yeah, you. we got to. We got to make up. To, we're gonna have to make it up. We're gonna have to do some special shit. I can't say what it's gonna be right now, but we have to do some special shit. Yeah, we definitely do. Everybody's killing Little Wayne right now on Twitter. Bro, I guess, bro, I, oh, I, I'll play. Yeah, Van just played it for I me. I played that for shows a second ago. What the, did you see? What what he said? Oh, bro? I'm watching it right now. Dog, huh? Wayne must be out of his mind, man. Everybody that knows Wayne says he's not even in this world, though. But he he got to be. Like, I, I've always, I haven't given much sort of credence to the Lil Wayne is always this and Lil Wayne is always that. But when you listen to what he said on the thing, he and then he's not even taking it seriously at all. So what did he end up saying? What I mean, the point that he made is the point that he's made before is that he actually made this point on Undisputed that he doesn't really feel connected to the Black Lives Matter movement. Okay. Not, but what Wayne said that he's rich and black in America, so that proves to you right there that Black Lives Matter. I well, Charlamagne's listening right now in the background. If you guys can hear, but uh, I think I think his point is that Black lives must matter to white people or some white people because if he goes and performs at his shows and sees tons of white faces in the crowd and mm -hmm. tons of the people who have bought his albums are white and the people who have supported him throughout his career are white, right. then black lives <laughs> must matter. <laughs> you, you heard what he said? You heard what he said about the bitches? He said, he said, he said especially to my bitches. He said, he said, he said, my life is mine. He said, I know what he's having it. He said, my life matters. And he said, especially, to, especially, especially to, my especially to my bitches. <laughs> especially, I know what you was laughing. I already knew. Hold on, this is Postmates. Oh my god! Let him grab it. Yeah, tell him. Oh that. my god! So he's in. Little Wayne is hilarious. Oh my god! He's like, my life matters, especially, especially to my especially to my bitches. <laughs> See, this is good. Oh man! Don't you think it does? Oh man! Oh, his ma his life definitely matters to his bitches. Man, that little Wayne shit is so goddamn funny, it's man. It's funny, bro. All right, can I just ask you one thing? Real quick before we get into this Lil Wayne, because yeah. I just got chastised by Letty, right? What? Because we asked her to help with the radio, right? And then we that we ordered some food. We asked her if she could go down and pick it up, and then she turned it into some like cultural, cultural female, politics, male gender politics Hispanic thing, like versus uh, that's her own insecurity. Just because she's a woman, that she got to fix, go get the food and fix the radio. Uh, you should have told us not because she's a woman, it's because she's Mexican. No, what? Charlamagne, <laughs> this close to the election, this is the problem, okay? We have a history-changing election coming, and you're making jokes about jokes these about things. It. You cool with the next president, man. Wow. 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 You sound like little Wayne, Charlamagne. Wow. <laughs> okay, so, Bro, so what happened with Wayne? Wayne is, that is... I watched that shit three times already. That shit was funny. Uh, really, when I was watching it the first time, I was watching it because it, it, it happened just as we were starting up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was like a sketch or some shit. I thought like it was Saturday Night Live or some shit like that. It's so outlandish. It could not be fucking real to me. <laughs> you said well, my life matters. Yeah, well, especially to my bitches. To, 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 to my bitches. Yo, he's Cat Williams. I was waiting for James <laughs> Corden to come out or something like that. No, like, he still thinks it's Halloween, bro. Bro. That shit was funny. And this is my thing. Okay. Why y'all mad at Why is everybody going in on Lil Wayne? People just want to be mad about stuff. It's Lil Wayne. Yeah, I, I know. He's been, he left Black Lives Matter when he started skateboarding. It's, it's, it's the same thing with Trick Daddy. Like, y'all was mad at, y'all mad at Trick Daddy. 
for calling women hoes. Well, it's not, it's not, it's, okay, okay, wait a Y'all mad at whales for swimming in the ocean. Wait a second, okay, okay. You don't have to necessarily. How dare these motherfucking beluga whales be swimming out there in the wait, ocean? Wait a second, wait a second. You don't, def, you don't necessarily have to be mad at the person. Can't you be mad at the sentiment? Can't you be mad at. Oh. Why? Because it's Little Wayne. How is he supposed to relate? It's gang banging, well, I, 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 I think that Lil Wayne has a bunch of kids that he wouldn't want to be profiled or wouldn't want to be, you know, victims of, of violence oh, from the police I thought, or something like that. Charlamagne's saying because he's a gang bang drug using dude. I thought you. Were, I thought the point you were trying to make was he's been in the public light for so long in his life that that is yeah, his, I, part I mean, of his identity. I mean, I mean, that too. But also, once again, it's little... Wayne. So what like if saying? it was somebody like Kendrick or J. Cole, somebody with some consciousness that people actually took serious when it comes to matters like that. Okay. Then it'd be different. Yeah. It's little Wayne. But, you know what? You know what though? I don't think that we can have it both ways like that. And the reason why I say that is because the the, the first time little Wayne makes a mistake or does something crazy, what you're going to hear from people is, oh, Lil Wayne is a father. Lil Wayne is a businessman. Lil Wayne is more than his lyrics. He's more than the sum of all these things. He's this and he's that and he's this and he's that. And we're going to have be forced to look at him as a thoughtful man who, outside of being a rapper or on lean or whatever, has a real life where he considers real issues, where he thinks no, real thoughts. No, but people, people always want to sell people that way. Lil Wayne has put himself in a position where he might not even he might not even trend on Twitter if he does, and if he does, it's gonna be because everybody's saying good for him. <laughs> like once you get new, once you become one of them all lives matter niggas, it's over for you. Bro. I know, but my my point my point in saying that is that's true. My point in saying that is, you know, sometimes there are. And I'm not saying necessarily with this or necessarily what with Trick said, but sometimes there are attitudes that, irregardless of who says them. You have to kind of strike out against those attitudes because they in and of themselves are destructive and negative. You, you don't think that's true? Yes, but... Who cares? Yes, little Wayne, little says, Wayne said 10 years ago come, come, that, come. He's, that he's worse than Satan. He said, he said so I'll what? never go to hell because I'll take over. He said, if I got beef, I'll kill your mama, your grandma, your kids, a newborn baby. I don't give a fuck. I knew Little Wayne was out of his goddamn mind then. So don't nothing that come out of his mouth surprise me. Right. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, I, I look, I agree with you, but I think there's something to be said when when it comes to holding rappers accountable for what they talk about. I've always said that. Sure. So it's yeah, like, but not Lil Wayne. No, meaning, yes, Lil Wayne. Like, you're saying he says he's going to kill all these people and all that kind of shit like that, so maybe that's he's... That's wrong, too. It, it's also wrong. So he Yeah, can, but, that, but that's my thing. It, this, this, this is my whole thing. With the things that we normalize and act like is okay, mm-hmm. Lil Wayne is the same dude that said, I'll take the knife off the AK and cut all these niggas. Like, he's been talking about killing people and all of this for years, and now all of a sudden y'all outraged because he says black lives, my life matters especially to my bitches okay, like, okay. come on man right. so 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 <laughs> yes finally things to be mad thank at you Charlamagne. I mean, well, well, thank you Charlamagne, for pointing out some very good po- wow you're holding people accountable but wait, this but is wait, beautiful but, 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 but wait a second wait, wait a second okay so we we can we, we we can step back and we can sort of contextualize and com- compartmentalize things right we don't okay can not, i just say one thing van sorry to interrupt what? one thing if if black lives matter uh to an artist mm-hmm. right he shouldn't be killing black people all the time in his music. Now, I'm not saying Wayne is doing that, right? But there are there are artists that talk about killing black people constantly in their sure. music. And title like it's something cool. And act like it's something cool. But, they celebrate okay. it. And then so they don't come out here and talk about how black lives are so important. I'm not, too. Listen, so, I'm so not so even going to get that deep. I'm not even going to get that deep in it. All I'm going to say is it's 120 million other things you could be mad at Little Wayne about. It's Little Wayne. I don't care. We're, we're, we're not talking about 120 million, million other things. We're talking about this. Yeah, but Sean, you're saying this. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, don't care. I don't care enough about what comes out of Little Wayne's mouth. I, but, but I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why it's me. worthy of caring about. The reason why it's worthy of caring about, in my opinion, is because we're, we're talking about a real issue, right? And the reason why she's asking that question to Lil Wayne, she's asking him that question because it's a legit issue that is affecting... No, she's not. Van, stop it. You're a journalist. She's asking that question because Lil Wayne has said outlandish thing about the BLM before and she was looking for a soundbite. No, 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 no. Okay, Mm -hmm. so so either way, though, the reason why the question is relevant, let's let's forget about why she might be specifically asking it to Lil Wayne. The reason why the question is relevant is because there's a relevant issue that is the the shrimp fried rice. Like, like, there's a... I don't want any of the noodles. The reason why there's a... Uh, the 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 re- there's a relevant issue that's affecting the lives 
of black Americans. Now, when you talk to Lil Wayne or any other hip hop artist, to be honest with you, these are people that are making their money and making their living selling what they believe to be black culture. All right. Whether or not you agree with what it is that they're selling, whether or not you think it's true or false, they're selling what they believe to be black culture. So it's not out of the ordinary to ask them about something that affects black culture. And if man, they say some fuck, it, and, and if they say they some they fuck don't, they don't shit, bring Killer Mike on those shows and it, ask Killer Mike about Black Lives well, Killer Matter. Mike is, Killer Mike is this, one of the smartest men in this. But, but that's what I'm saying. They don't do that. They don't do that to people who can actually answer the question. They wanted a soundbite. They wanted a soundbite. You know that. Stop it. They wanted a soundbite. Also, but that's not. Wait a minute. He's not as popular rapper as Lil Wayne is. It doesn't matter. It does they matter. Do that, they do that to people that they know will jump out the window. Why do you think Nightline sent that particular clip out? Well, because that, it was, I mean, it, I, Nightline I did, sent I that clip out. Those. Yeah, right here. Come on, man. You I know what this is. I know, but the, the fact of the matter is you're, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're putting all of this, this stuff around it. Why can't we address the merit of what he said? Why is what that is it so going, wrong to let me, do? Let me, ask you, let me ask you this. What is it going to change? What do you mean? Why, why should why should what Little Wayne says about Black Lives Matter affect Black Lives Matter movement in any way, shape, Here's or form? Here's a question. Here's it's a question. wasted energy. Here's a question, right? Do you think that there are any people who are All Lives Matter um, uh, supporters out there that are going, see? Lil Wayne doesn't believe in le- Black Lives Matter. That must be the end all be all for course. black thought in America. <laughs> See? Tommy did a, when, when Lil Wayne cares. made those other comments on Undisputed, Tommy did a whole rant siding with Lil Wayne saying, yes, finally. And, and, it don't, and it don't help that Lil Wayne looks like a Black Lives Matter nigga. Like, he looked like, <laughs> he he looked like somebody that would be down with the movement. Can I t- like, can I t- he, t- he's primed to be profiled. I think that this makes sense in the context of what I believe to be about hip hop. This, this is what I believe about hip hop and about sports. Hip hop to me is one of the only black uh, aspects of black culture that's completely accepted by mainstream America. What I mean is if you walk up and down the street, right, and you ask the average person that you would consider to be a part of mainstream America mm-hmm. to name five black directors, five black novelists, five black whatever, they're not going to be able to do it. But they can name you five rappers. They can name you five rappers because rap has penetrated into the consciousness of mainstream America. So when Lil Wayne sits there and he says something, whether or not he wants a certain responsibility, he's speaking on behalf of someone. And the Tommy Larens and all the people like that, that that say, listen, Lil Wayne thinks that Black Lives Matter is bullshit. Lil Wayne thinks that this is bullshit. That stuff like that gets held up. And it, to me, it does do damage to a method of thought that a lot of people and let me tell you something, man. If, 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 if what Little Wayne thinks about Black Lives Matter does damage the Black Lives Matter, then Black Lives Matter not as strong as we think it is. Period. Who gives a fuck what Little Wayne got to say about any social issues? I yeah. don't... Like, who gives I, this I little think, fucking Wayne? I think a good point is just because you're black doesn't mean that your opinion is the end-all, be-all for Black Lives Matter. Absolutely. When there I, are black I, people who can have who can say things that are anti Black Lives Matter or pro Black Lives Matter, regardless of which, and you can discredit them based on who they are and their past. Just like there's white people you can discredit based on who they are in their past. That if, happens if, all if, the time. If, and, if, and, if, and, what Little Wayne said on Nightline for forty five seconds can discredit everything that Black no. Lives Matter has been doing over the past few years, and we need to rethink this whole Black Lives Matter. Well, my my point is this: just because it comes from his mouth doesn't mean that we shouldn't strike down the ideas that he's talking about. It, it, it's not irrelevant what he said because he's Lil Wayne and because he's so outlandish or whatever like that. It doesn't make it... He's not going to He's not gonna change uh, and, and make a sort of a new mandate on Black Lives Matter whether or not it's, it's working or it's not. But when you hear fuck shit, you destroy the fuck shit. And to be honest with you, if someone has a voice loud enough to where people are willing to listen, listen to them and they say fuck shit, it's even more important... This is the argument. The this, this, this is the argument we should be having. Not even the argument. This is where our energy should. If you want to focus your energy, focus your energy on making nobody ever pay attention to Little Wayne ever again. Do Little Wayne the same way you did Bill Cosby or whoever else you try. You got out the paint, Nate Parker. Nate Parker. Like, don't we don't care about you no know, free C five and ain't no none of that shit no more. Just get Little Wayne out of here. Bye. We don't we don't care about you no more. Oh, he's doing you don't care about that. us. We don't care about you. He's doing a good job of that himself. But still, though, like the idea that because you've attained a, a certain level of success or because you're rich or because you're that, that means that you don't 
have to give a, a fuck about what's happening to people that came up with you and share your community. It's fine. That's your right as an American. But I think a lot of people would say that it's wrong and that it's counterproductive. And not, not that it's counterproductive for black people, that it's counterproductive for the for American society not to have any solidarity uh, yeah, but, it, but 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 Van, but Van, it, it, it's, I think I think that celebrity privilege thing probably is different, especially when you've been a celebrity since like well, the age whole 40. life. Like Lil Wayne has literally been a celebrity his whole life. He stays in the studio. He's high. He's rich. His life is not like any not, not even just white people. It's like it's white people who don't live like Lil Wayne. Like I mean, his, his life is just different. Most white people do not live like Lil Wayne. <laughs> You know, you know, there are tons of white people that would trade places with Lil Wayne. You know, you know how we, man, we talk about it all the time, man. We talk about how you, you know you got these white people who live in these suburbs who have no idea what's going on in the in communities other than their own. But, but I mean, you say Lil Wayne's life is so extraordinary, and, and and it is. He's been famous for a long time. But I could look at his life and think that there are some things that are painfully ordinary as far as the, the, the experiences of other black Americans and, and young black men that are living in New Orleans. You're talking about a guy with, I think, a murdered father. You're talking about a guy from a single-parent home. You're talking about a guy who, in his adulthood, caught a gun and a drug charge. I mean, if you if you, if you you look at his life, sure, there are extraordinary aspects to his life, but some of the things in his life are painfully ordinary and are things that other black men go through and I, I don't think that there's anything that separates guys like Lil Wayne. Because to be honest with you, Lil Wayne runs down a TV, down a down a down a dark street, like holding the TV in his hand, or like the cop can't see him. He's just another nigga with dreads. Listen, I'm with you. I know that, and you know that. But Lil Wayne has no clue. Okay, what about this argument, right? This is this is hypothetical flip. Lil Wayne got his tour bus shot up, right? By whom? Some white people? No. I, mean, I don't know who shot the tour bus up. I mean, who do you think done it? You think a couple white guys that. did it? I, I don't know who. I mean, Lil Wayne's been ripped off in the music business by who? White people. What's your point? My point is, what if in his life, just because his life is so specific and so unique, it just so happened that the white people in his life haven't treated him bad, and that, that he's ha- that almost had his life taken by people who he presumed were black and had millions of dollars potentially stolen from him by a father figure who just happened to be black sees fucked up shit happening in the community and then what if just his specific life has made him so detached from the reality of what's happening in America where you see what's happening honestly to black people who do not have his privilege but what if this unique circumstance has skewed his view of black people and white people to the point where he started, where he starts thinking, "Hey, maybe the problem isn't these white people who come out to say, my shows did, and love he, me." He did say something similar to that. He uh, he was talking about how when he got when he shot himself, all the black officers you know, walked right past him, and a white officer came in there and told the black guys, "Don't you see this guy bleeding here?" And he said a white officer picked him up and drove him to the hospital. He did. He did. He did say that. He did say something. Okay. I'm just saying he has a very specific, unique life that has given him I just a completely don't understand why different we give a view fuck of the real world. Wayne but but you, but you do understand. I, I think that, I, and I hear this a lot. I think that uh, because of who Lil Wayne is, that w- what you want to do is you want you want to say concentrate on the right things, concentrate on the right voices, concentrate on the people that we should be concentrating on. A lot of times, the people that we should be concentrating on, they don't have the voices that they need to have. You ask why Nightline is interviewing is, isn't interviewing Killer Mike. Like, we've all dealt with Killer Mike. We all know Killer Mike and stuff like this. When Killer Mike first started, you know, coming around where, where I work and stuff like that, I had to tell them who Killer Mike was. Now, that's not saying anything against Mike. Mike has been making great music and doing great work for a very long time. And now he has an unbelievable footing um, in the office. And everyone that watches our that watches our show and, and deals with us knows exactly how with it and together and smart that he is. Lil Wayne is simply one of the biggest stars in the world. And he's been that way for a very, very long time. So when you talk about why they're talking to him, you look at a community by and large that's propped him up and given this, given him this platform, and then he uses the platform to speak his views, which is fine. That's what he should do. If that's what he feels, that's what he should say. But that doesn't mean that we can't assassinate those views. It doesn't mean that it's not important to assassinate those views. Yes. It is important to assassinate yeah, no, those I, views. I agree with I that. Agree with that I, I agree with that. But yeah, I, just think it's not, I just think I just think a lot of time it's. Other than to laugh at it and be like, "Boy, that nigga's stupid." Yeah. So it's a waste of energy to try to explain what Black Lives Matter is to Little Wayne. Yeah. Like, who cares? Like, and guess what? If we paid this much attention to the voices, 
in our community who are actually saying the right things, then, you know, it would, it would make more sense. And I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be interested in seeing. I want to see if T.I. checks Lil Wayne. Mm. Because T.I. has been very vocal about Black Lives Matter movement. And he checked Floyd Mayweather when Floyd Mayweather made those comments about All Lives Matter. I would love to see if T.I. checks Lil Wayne publicly. Why do you think he wouldn't do it? I mean, they're boys. Oh, they've been, why? They've been they're boys, you know, and, ra- and rappers have that... Rappers have that code, you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it's easy for him to check Floyd Mayweather because that's somebody who he's had issues with before, and, you know, they're not, of the, same, they're yeah. not of the same coat, kind of. I want to see if he checks Wayne. Hmm. Well, he but I'm it. definitely giving Wayne Donkey the day tomorrow, only because I want to play that one line. Why would you give Donkey the day? <laughs> my life matters, <laughs> especially to my bitches. I need to play that five times. That is hilarious. But like, even that, though, isn't that just... Well, forget about... Fuck whatever Lil Wayne believes. But isn't that just belittling something that's really fucking serious? Whether or not you believe that there's an epidemic problem with police shootings and, and or whether or not you believe that at all, isn't that just shouldn't you have more respect for the issue than to make a joke about it? You think that, that you think that Philando Castile and, and Sterling and man, all of those, that's, you think that's this, funny? This what you man, this what you missing. Wayne wasn't joking. Wayne's serious. Wayne, Wayne said Wayne's that was 100% so much serious. Wayne was, Wayne was Listen, dead serious. His Wayne life matters serious. to his bitches, bro. Uh, but you know what, what, what else was interesting was what his, his view of the world before that, because he said, it's a white man holding that camera. Yeah. And he's filming me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> like, like that's, his, that's, his, that's what he, he views himself in, in that, on, that, on that level. In like, Wayne's life, white people have worked for him. There's yeah. been very few people in Wayne's wife in Wayne's life that he's worked for, right? We're talking about most of the people that he's worked with in his life are white people working for him. Man, assistants, Wayne worked, Wayne worked roadies, more. setting up the Whether fucking or not Wayne shows. Wayne knows it or not. Wayne, Wayne, Wayne worked for as many white people as me, as Charlemagne, as you. Wayne worked. For, but Wayne you, got a lot way, more white people working for him than and, you do. That's true. And like, because I have zero. Um, exactly, well, and, inter- like and the interactions that he has with those people. Constantly, like, think about any show that Wayne goes to. He's got the Teamsters that are working for him. He's got the roadies that are working for him. He got the people setting up. He got the people in the trucks. All these people. Let's just say sixty percent of them are white. Just going off of statistics, sixty-five percent are white. In Wayne's life, constantly white people are subservient to him. Ask him if he needs something. Can I do anything for you? Wayne literally thinks white people are his you guys, slaves. You guys, it would take. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wayne thinks it's a reverse 18 fucking 30 um, I'm just saying look is he wrong in what he's saying absolutely it, it, do I disagree with everything he says absolutely is his life different than all of us and does he not maybe have absolutely. the perspective that we have absolutely guys, it, it would take I understand what you guys are saying and the reasons why I think these things could, he could think these things it would take a severe a severe lack of perspective lack of touch with reality for any of these things, now I'm not saying that that's not the case, but think about what you're saying. You're telling me that Lil Wayne, who by the way, also has some experiences that we don't have, right? He's been a lot of places. He's been a lot. He's seen a lot of things. This he thinks not, he's a Martian. But but, but, but like you're, you're talking about somebody. He's that he, harder he, wait, to wait, believe than he lives. He, all he, lives he, knows he, he knows he lives in America. If you had two things that you had to believe in, you're like, which is more difficult? That all lives matter, or that you're I'm a Martian. Martian. <laughs> Which for you is easier to believe? Like he's convinced he's a Martian. I know that. It's of course, funny, but, but he don't even care about lives. He care about Martians. Right. But but my thing is, I, listen. It's is is this is troubling, man. It's is 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 it's troubling when brothers get to a, a certain perspective and, and a certain perch, and then then like, and I'm not even saying specifically with with, with black people, a black man to black man, when they get to a specific perch. And they act like they have no fucking clue. Lil Wayne is from the 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 with the Holly Grove projects, man. You I'm giving have Lil some... Wayne donkey the day tomorrow, but I'm letting you know right now, I don't give a shit about what comes out of Lil Wayne mouth. We got to stop paying people like that attention. Like they like this is like like paying people like him attention is the same reason Donald Trump is the GOP nominee right mm. now. What you mean? Like we like we pay ridiculousness attention. We give ridiculousness energy. Mm. We give ignorance energy. We we bring these things to life. We could easily dead this little Wayne situation yes. by not talking about it. If nobody tweeted about it, if nobody retweeted and said he's crazy and he's dumb or whatever, yeah. that would go away. Donald Trump was Yo. the worst example you could have used. No, no, but Why? you, know, you want to know something? Because, right, because, Why? because because Donald Trump came out and said a whole bunch of things that we all thought were stupid mm-hmm. and, ha- and, and maybe we ignored them. 
but there was a large swath of the country that didn't ignore them. No, and man. They would that, never that, know what about that, what them. Was the, what, was they, what was the main thing they asked the media not to do? Don't even cover Trump. It was exactly. a point where they didn't even want the media to He's cover Trump. They were like, stop but, giving him attention. But, but then you got to understand, right? If the media doesn't cover Trump, those people out there that are voting for him, they're not watching the fucking debates. They're not nope. watching that kind of shit. Nope. They're seeing that shit come up on okay. Facebook, on Twitter. Yep. They're seeing that shit come up on Instagram, and they're going, yep. you know what? Build a wall for Mexico. I fucking like this guy. Yep. Most of these people aren't educated voters that are involved in the political process. Come on, the vast minority are. You, you, so, this, so, what do you mean? What I'm saying is, you guys are off on this. You don't ignore bad ideas. You kill them. You don't ignore. That's bad, what kills you, them. You, you don't ignore. Ignoring them kills no, them. You don't ignore wrong-headed thinking. You destroy it. Donald Why? Trump. You, Donald, listen, Donald Trump is a billionaire that is running for president. He was self-funding his campaign. Uh -huh. There was no way they weren't going to cover him because they didn't agree with him. First of all, that in and of itself is un-American. That would never happen. Uh -huh. If Donald Trump, if Donald Trump gets up there and he starts talking crazy, if he's not. He, he he wasn't he, he was challenged true but what his bad ideas found were a home with people who believed the same things so it's very important that when you don't believe those things mm. you show people the consequences now man they've been doing media blackouts our whole life but not on presidential candidates all right let me give you a different example like, you're describing basically the war on drugs which is a huge failure what do you right mean? you're like these drugs are fucking horrible let's punish those drugs kill the people that use those drugs kill that idea immediately when in reality what you should have done is not even fucking touch the drug let people sell the drugs on the street you'd eliminate make the drugs legal you eliminate it all what you're doing is sensationalizing the movement when you're constantly talking about Trump Trump got more media coverage than any other GOP candidate Trump got more questions asked to him than any other GOP he candidate was good for he of course he was, exactly he was good for ratings we're to blame it's the same reason why McDonald's sells shitty food because we buy it same reason why rappers talk about killing people because we buy it the second we do a blackout on music that is that is bad for people and culture they'll stop making it and the second we stop watching Trump say racist shit all the time he'll stop saying it and, man, don't, act like, and don't act like they can't do media blackouts they've been doing a media blackout on Farrakhan for the past 25 30 years true yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, that's a completely different situation. And he's Why? saying Why? radical shit. Really no, no, no. Bring up that example, Charlie, because that's a great point. Is anybody saying more radical things than Farrakhan has said? No, no, no. Oh, but not, only is, oh. no, no. not only is Farrakhan saying what some people would consider radical things, he's saying what some people would consider very conscious okay, things. Okay, and so. he's bringing people together. How many million man marches has Farrakhan done and had millions of people marching on Washington and you haven't seen no mainstream okay. national news I, I, stuff before? Here's, 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 first of all, there's a couple things that are unique with Farrakhan. Number one, if... I, if right now Louis Farrakhan or if Louis Farrakhan would have, excuse me, declared that he was running for president and that he was seeking a Democratic nomination for president, they would have covered Louis Farrakhan. No, they wouldn't if, have. If, if Louis Farrakhan had a big enough, if, if Farrakhan had a big enough swath of the voting to get there, they would have covered it. Secondly, a lot of the things, and this is just the way things work in the world, a lot of things that Louis Farrakhan has said and a lot of people that 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 he's offended, should I say? Um, I'm a great admirer of Minister Farrakhan, but you know, if, if you believe some of the stuff that they say about him, if you believe that he he's an anti-Semite, if you believe that those things are, are, are true, once again, I am a great respecter of, of of Minister Farrakhan. Obviously, there are certain people that if you offend them, they can turn the cameras off on you. Obviously, there's a, there's there's certain people that if you offend the right group, they yeah. can. The Mexicans can't turn the fucking cameras off. They like they can operate the cameras probably, but they can't they can't turn the fucking cameras off. And the problem so you, the, 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 you don't think that Donald Trump <clears throat> gets coverage on networks <clears throat> who's who the people who own those networks don't support him at all. No, I'm, I'm sure some of the people do support but him. They know he's good for ratings. Like the, I, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, there there was a there was a. Like, if you read uh, any, any Donald Trump articles that, like, if you read the bottom of the Huffington Post, they editorialize it at the bottom of the Huffington Post, and they say Donald Trump is a misogynist, he's a xenophobe, he's all of these things like that. And they say that at the bottom, right, because the Huffington Post didn't want to cover him, but they had to cover him because he's a relevant candidate in a national election. So what they did was, under, underneath it, they editorialize it. To me, that's wrong. To me, if people want to, you, you put Donald Trump out there, People decide, but you 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 knock down what he's saying with ferocity. If you you talk about like is you talk about this stuff like it's cancer. You don't beat cancer by ignoring cancer. If you if you ignore cancer, it grows until it kills everything inside of your body. 
In order to beat cancer, you gotta treat it. You have to treat it. Now, the war on drugs, the, 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 the thing that you brought up, it's not that they shouldn't have, they went about it the wrong way. It's not that you do nothing and then it just goes away, but you just don't do what they did. Listen, right. man, I understand what both of y'all are saying, and y'all are bringing up good points, but Dr. Wayne W. Dyer had the best quote in the four, uh, the best quote. He said, don't, no, that wasn't Dr. Wayne W. Dyer? Maybe it was, no, Don Miguel Ruiz. He said, take, 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 memory, take, he says, take, <laughs> memory talk. <laughs> the four agreements. He says, take no offense, because when you take offense, that which offends you only weakens you and creates the same negative energy that offended you in the first place. Some things you should just simply not give a fuck about. And I don't give a fuck about what comes out of Lil Wayne. Oh, I'm not offended. I'm inspired. See, I don't get mad. First of all, Lil Wayne, well, tell me how Lil Wayne's inspiring you. This is the problem with us as a people. Go ahead. Well, Lil Wayne, why does Lil Wayne inspire you? Lil Wayne is inspiring me because what I realize is that there's still a lot of work to do. Is that uh, like... He did Lil Wayne to nope, say nope. that? You <laughs> realize that? No, nope. my point is this. You have Lil Wayne. You, you, you have a lot of people that uh, know the right things to say. But you have to wonder, do they believe them, Right. You have to. You, you, there's a lot of people. You know, when you talk about all of these rappers and and, and stuff like that, do these people even re, do they believe what they say? Now, I appreciate what Lil Wayne said. The reason why I appreciate what he said was because if that's what he really feels, if he really looks at things like that, we should hear those things. Because what we should know is that there are there is a certain segment of our community or our American community that once they attain something, they're going to be like, fuck everybody else and forget about it. Now, we know that, but it's important that we attack it in the right way and we decide and whether or not that's something I that we want to deal with. Fuck. I care about as much, I care about Lil Wayne talking about Black Lives Matter as much as I did Iggy. When everybody was like, why Iggy don't say nothing? Because she profits off our culture and don't say, I don't, why do y'all want Iggy to say something? Who cares? Fuck you, who gives a fuck what Lil Wayne has to say about Black Lives Matter? People want somebody to roast publicly. That's all they it is. They fucking self, Because here's man. the thing. It's, uh, I love Wayne. Been growing, I've been on that music show. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, but like, people feel like they're doing something when they roast somebody. Right? By the way, by the way, I want you to check my history and go look at how many donkeys of the day I gave Lil Wayne. I gave Lil Wayne, I, I've been giving Lil Wayne donkey of the day consistently since 2009 when he first made those comments to Ozone Magazine where he said... If I got beef with you, I will kill everybody in your family. I'll kill your mama, your grandma, a newborn. I don't give a fuck. I can never go to hell because I'll take over, bitch. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the most ridiculous thing I had ever heard in my life. I've been off Little Wayne ever since. So I could care less what he says. That this is this is he's he's on brand with this one. Mm. If he he would have shocked me by saying something prolific. He would have shocked me by saying something empowering. This don't shock me coming from little fucking Wayne. It's not that I'm shocked. It's like I said, like I, I don't think that I don't think that you 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 destroy the dumb shit by letting it fester. I think you got. I, I don't think it festers. How about this? Okay, so Van, Van, we're grown. We're grown now. Why are we been letting so much dumb shit fester in hip hop all these years? Because we like love what? it. Because it got a beat to it. Because boy, as long as it got that goddamn Manny Fresh or Metro booming beat, mm. baby. And some misogyny? Just put the, some DJ mustard I, on I don't it. Think that's <laughs> perfect. Just spread a little of that mustard on that murder. <laughs> spread a little of that mustard Listen, on that murder. Van, you, Van, you know all I want is consistency, bro. You but, can't sit here and say, you know, you don't let things fester, but we've been letting Little Wayne fester for 20 plus years. Why are all, you so. Here's my, here's my question, and I think that this goes to what, what, what Charlamagne is saying is why are you so okay with Lil Wayne saying so many disgusting things in his music and you have no problem with it whatsoever? You're not worried about that thing festering. You're not worried about that ideology growing, and you don't want to kill that cancer. But the second he says something anti Black Lives Matter, all of a sudden it's important. Okay, two, two things. Um, number one, I, I do have a problem with it. I think me and Charlamagne have had some conversations. I uh, mean, you have had some conversations sure. where I said uh, a lot of the music that I was raised on, that that I grew up on, I look at it now, and when I see actual people dying and actual situations happening, I, I think that uh, we need to start just reexamining some stuff. And that just kind of happens as you get a little older. So I, I do think that there's a problem with it. Mm -hmm. e even more to that problem, and I'll go to the second thing in a second, but even more to that problem, I think the question is, isn't, isn't why we let things fester in the music, the greater question is, why do we let certain things fester in our communities? And there's a whole way that we need to look um, at how we're relating to one another and what we accept. Not you don't think the music influences the community? 
I think the 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 music niggas didn't start rapping and then niggas started getting started getting killed. Niggas started killing and selling drugs and they started rapping about yeah, it. Yeah, but then there was rappers that started you know dressing a certain way and then all of a sudden the community started dressing a certain way. I think it's a it's a it's a circle. Uh, it, it, it's it, a, it, it, it's a circle, but there was a genesis. And so I, oh I, sure, I, just because some, but just because something starts something doesn't mean that everything afterward has no responsibility whatsoever. No, no, no I'm not saying it doesn't have a responsibility. So you what still have a responsibility as an influencer in the world. What I'm saying is if there was no if there was no trap, there'd be no trap music. Yeah, yeah, I get it but there is a trap that's in the past that's happened and we have to address well, what's happening, happening now but it's still happening sure now. sure right. and what's also still happening now is we have rappers who have never lived this life whatsoever that are celebrating the idea of murdering people selling drugs and I fucking treat women like right. shit I, tell, I, tell, I mean that's, that's, that's the other thing too man he's right they, they took they took they took the worst of our society and started commercializing it, and they weren't even living that which is which is which is more dangerous than the people who actually you guys you guys you guys you guys you guys there, there are realities that are existing inside of communities, okay? There are realities that are being reinforced by hip-hop music. Hip-hop music is not creating any of these realities because they date back way before hip-hop music. Like, like, so, so to find create, it might not create it within. It, it, it the, might be no, It I'm, might not be the catalyst that creates right. it. No, 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 right. no, 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 no. It, I understand, but let me make this point. It, it didn't. It, did, it wasn't the the catalyst that actually sparked the thing that we're talking about, right? But it could be a thing that created it in another community. For example, a way of rapping or a way of dressing might have been cool in the South at first. All of a sudden, it was popularized by Southern rap, and now you got dudes in the North that are hip-hop, copying hip-hop, this style. Hip-hop perpetuated. Right. Hip hop perpetuates it and then and then creates it and lets it move on in other communities. Hip hop perpetuated it and we keep using the street. Well, what I'm saying, the, right? We keep using the real street as an excuse. I, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know, I know, but my point, but my point, well, the point that I'm trying to make is, if before there was hip hop music, before mm-hmm. there was music that celebrated this mm-hmm. in the '70s, there was there was film that did it right. There were movies like Superfly mm-hmm. and The Mac that celebrated what was going on then, mm-hmm. which was pimping and macking and really the domination and enslavement of women in our communities. Now, when I was brought up, and I was brought up by two very lovely, unbelievably great parents, mm-hmm. two-parent home stability, I never heard what a bad guy Superfly was. I never heard what a bad guy The Mac was. I never heard what a terrible person and terrible what was going on. What I heard was, damn, man, we got a white blah, 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 blah. And it was it was it was a point because these are things that weren't completely unfamiliar with what was going on in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's easy to cast a pimp or a drug dealer uh, as a terrible, bad, awful, ridiculous individual, unless that pimp or that drug dealer is your brother. Or unless that pimp or that drug dealer went to school with you. Or unless that pimp or that drug dealer is somebody that you know. Mm-hmm. And when you live in a situation, you live in a neighborhood where you know more people that society looks at as being terrible, there's a tendency to normalize these things. What The, worst, the first thing that we have to address mm-hmm. inside of our societies is that shit ain't normal. And it's hurting us more than it's hurting anybody yes. else. The there you rap, go. The, the, there you the, go. The, the, oh, the, the, right. and, but that comes good. with growth. That and comes I, with growth, right. man. And that I, comes with age. Right. And I've grown. And I've grown. Right. Yeah. But yeah. secondly, when you when you start to when you start to look at hip hop, I think that there is a difference between looking at something that's done uh, for the purposes of entertainment and something that is put to a beat, and then sitting down listening to somebody in their Cognitive, they're 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 removed. They're 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 supposedly meted out thoughts. Like to me, I, I tell something- you the difference, man. I tell you the one fundamental difference, and I say this all the time. There is no other genre who claims to be real outside of the entertainment factor. If you, you can name the most violent, <clears throat> you can name Pacino or any of these guys that have played these gangsters in movies. Mm-hmm. They're not try, they're not pre- pretending or portraying to be this outside of that yeah, movie. Marlon Brando these, wasn't really a godfather. Exactly. These rappers portray to be this even when they're not on the mic. And microphone. lie about it. And they're, and look, look, here's the thing. I'm fine with you making money immorally, right, and unethically. We know a lot of people that make money immorally and unethically, okay? But don't take moral stances on anything after that. If you make your money in a fucked up way by hurting people... Don't try to act like a good person outside of that and want to care about the environment or want to do these other things when you know you're making your money killing people. Now, if you're a gangster rapper and somebody asks you, what do you think about Black Lives Matter? Just shut the fuck up. 
Because you're doing shit to perpetuate the stereotypes that get your people killed. Once again, that's easy for you to say, but the reality is, when I was coming up, the drug dealers in my hood pay for our basketball team. So, is he it like, like, like when it's is that worth it? What do you mean? Because they because that they fuck up the entire community, but they buy, buy a basketball team for two hundred dollars. I mean, listen, well, man, the, when the, you know no, better, no, you wait, do wait, better. Wait, 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 no, that's a that's a that's a that's a that's a. A good question. But they sell they sell drugs man, to your uncles listen, and cousins, listen, listen, but they buy you a basketball team. Let's keep it in entertainment for one second, just okay. real quick, right? One yeah. second. But I have a there's response. Not, there's not a movie that we watched growing up. This, this, this is what I used to love about the movies that we grew up on. There wasn't a movie that we grew up on that perpetuated the hood without showing the other side. New Jack City showed how Nino Brown made his money, but also showed how he ruined the community mm -hmm. and how people in that community did not want him there. Boys in the Hood showed Doughboy and all them gangbanging, but also showed the real realities of that situation. All of them ended up dead or ended up in jail. Same thing with Menace Society. The problem was as, we grew, was, as we grew and grew, there was no balance anymore. So it was just violence, 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 corruption, 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 murder, 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 kill, 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 and nobody showing people the consequences of their actions. Well, because the, the, the guys who made the movies that you just named, um, I mean, like they were, they were artists that, I mean, they didn't come from the same generation. They thought that they did, but they really didn't. I mean, like with, I mean, the reality is, things have gotten be progressively better and progressively worse at the same time. When 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 New Jack City was made, it was basically a Scarface movie made in the hood, and you needed a character arc for the movie to go up or go down. Like after certain guys came along and did what they did, like when you talked about Tupac a lot of the times earlier. Tupac is being celebrated, right? And I love I love Tupac. I love Tupac. Tupac is being celebrated. Tupac was another black man murdered before his 25th birthday or on his 25th birthday mm -hmm. or near his 25th birthday. So for all of Tupac's prodigious talents, for everything that he can do, for everything that he said, his life ended in a very tragic and ordinary way for, for far too many black men. So when you guys, when you when you look at guys that, that kind of grew up on that and idolize that, they it's a caricature. Is it's a caricature of a lot of these things, so there are no lessons to be learned or told because people are too busy pretending. They're too busy seeking relevance out of things. So, so let's call them out on, on their pretending. That's fine. To, to 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 me, when we know it has a negative effect, this pretending. To, to, to me, what what really needs to be addressed. We we can address music, and we can address symptoms, but even going through what I what what I just went through, you don't address a symptom. Like you, 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 you don't address a symptom. You don't mask a symptom. You don't say that music is an issue when there are things that have been going on in these communities. There's access issues. There's issues of of, of disenfranchisement. There's issues of equality. There's issues of the reason why the drugs are there in the first place, which we all know the answer to. All kinds of things like that. I swear to God, if there are better outlets and better avenues there, things will change. The thing. Things things will change. These are human Why beings. Why are you that, so reluctant to hold the culture of gangster rap accountable? I don't want to. It's, it's not about holding the, the culture of gangster rap accountable. It's not. It's, it seems like it because you're making all these other excuses. No, you're not, like, I'm, oh, I'm, if no, we switch no, this no, no, and no, we do I'm, that, I'm, it's not about. Why not, can't you just say it's wrong to say we should I, kill already, people and celebrate? I've, I've already said that. I've already said that. What I, I've, I've already said that I think that it's wrong. I think that we should hold. But them you're making an all lives matter argument right now. You're I'm doing. Not. But there are these other things. No, We're no, just no, no, talking no. about one thing that's fucked no, up. No. Why can't we focus on that? The, the reason why we can't focus on it is because if we tell rappers right now mm -hmm. to stop rapping about murder and drugs and all of this stuff like yeah. that. They'll be little. They'll be Lil Yachty, and they'll be a Chance the Rapper, and they'll be the most successful rappers that are out there. Good for them. Yeah, but they would. But, but, the but then again, but then again, they wouldn't be my favorite rapper of the year. Rapper of the year. Savage. And you know, I'm so hype. I'm so contradictory with this. Twenty One Savage go hard. Bro. Lord, <laughs> like the music, the point, the we're point. the problem. We are the fucking love problem, dude. Murder. We but, love this but, shit. But 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 we're not though. The reason why I say we're not is because it's it's. People always like the salacious shit. The best show, of, the best show of all time on television is The Sopranos. The best movie of all time, people you just talked about, is The Godfather. Those things are about you know murder and family and all of that stuff like that. Yeah. My point is that 
Well, we talk. If and if you talking, ask Italians that aren't in the mafia, they fucking hate it. They okay. think it's disgusting. They look. If you ask the Cuomo family, and and if you uh, any of the Cuomos, Chris is the journalist, but the Cuomo that, that runs Andrew, I think Cuomo's the governor of New York. If you ask them how their father felt about the mafia, he was disgusted. He was like, they like, they like the Godfather. This, this no, he's they're disgusted. They 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 might they might be disgusted by the mafia. No, but they, they said, like the Godfather. And he goes, this this is what you think of our culture. This beautiful rich culture of of music of food is boiled down to these. Black Americans feel assholes. like that. You don't think that you don't think that black men like are are, are are sick and tired and fed up of being sort of equated with the lowest common denominator and drug dealers and, and, and murderers hey, and yeah. stuff like that. Young yeah, savage, sure. why you trapping so hard? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think they do, and yeah. I think that I think that voice can be heard a lot more than it is. I don't think it is heard a lot more, and I think a lot of times when these conversations are brought up, we have people like yourself that are making these arguments, like ah, oh, but we have to address the community, the, no, the problems that no. are in the community. Ah, oh, but if we just put a, a, a no, boys and girls center, then it would change no, it all. No, 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 no. But, but you, Listen, you're, you're here's, like, you're here's the, like the actual here's, people's lives. Here's the no, issue: the, the, the actual people's lives that are, that, that the are creating the the, 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 the the situations for the music. Mm-hmm. Like that's not a thing. So you think every one of these rappers live those lives? I don't know. So you know that they don't. So this that's the issue. Do. They're lying. We, if they we need actually live those lives, it'd be fine, but they're fake. lying. Well, I mean, so, I mean say, say what you're saying. We need rappers to go back to being fake, and we got to stop giving them shit for being fake. I am on record for saying that I want my rappers to do real shit. Like, I want gangster rappers to do gangster shit. Mm-hmm. I, I, I take that back. I was dead wrong for saying that. Yep. I want rappers to go back to being fake. Like, I wish 21 Savage wasn't real, but he is, mm-hmm. Okay. But I love his music. Like I'm, like I'm fine with rappers just doing it the way guys do mafia movies yeah. or do these action thrillers. Like I'm fine with knowing that it's all entertainment. My problem is when it's not all entertainment because this music I, I, is really I, I, influencing people. I've told you before. I don't need my entertainment to come from criminals. I don't need my music to come from people who actually want to kill people. You're wearing well, you a clearly, shirt. You clearly have crooks. never heard uh, Young Savage what is a Metro crook? with no what, heart. What is a crook? They have a whole explanation. Shout out to Crystal Castles, by the way. What is a crook? They, shout out to Crystal Castles. A crook is a thief. They, but, right? No, no, no. But they, 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 I hit her with no condom, they, then they I made her eat a plan. They have a whole explanation to, to, to this whole thing. So um, shout out to guys at Crystal Castles on Fairfax. I love those guys. Those are my dudes. But um, but but uh, no, the, 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 the reality is this. You know, a, a, a lot of this stuff uh, isn't cut and dry, and we definitely need to to to, to clean up the the the, the, the what do you think music. influences what do you think influences non-black people's perspective of black people more than hip-hop not knowing black people no 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 just <laughs> influencing factors obviously they don't know them because they live in a place that doesn't have black people right, right. if you knew black people every single day it wouldn't matter what you saw in hip-hop you so like, no, that's, no, influ- that's what influences them not knowing black people. so what so not knowing them right, right. that's what the do biggest you think influence. is sure 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 sure, sure. Yeah. what do you think is the greatest Social influencer, the greatest uh, artistic influencer that puts. I already said that. I think that is hip hop. So hip hop, and and we know that hip hop and sports, hip hop and sports, which, which are now cut, kind of intertwined. Sure, anyway. sure. Now we know for a fact, uh-huh. right, with hip hop, especially right. the most popular version of hip hop, uh, maybe not of late, but in the last maybe twenty years in the past, without a doubt, was gangster rap. Sure. So you don't think that that has placed a negative stereotype and view, not not necessarily for black people on black people, but definitely has influenced that, but for non-blacks on blacks. Okay. So what we're, what I'm to believe now is that the negative view mm-hmm. and stereotype of black men as criminals and, and drug dealers and drug addicts started in 1990. No. So you said twenty years. So it started in ninety four. So 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 what I'm supposed to believe is in America. It started prior, with death row records. Wait 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 wait. So what I'm supposed to believe? Actually is, wait, actually wait, 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 no, no, wait, let me clarify. To, wait, wait. I'm supposed to believe in America. No, 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 actually yeah. Prior to yeah. Pri- so what, yeah, what you're saying is yeah, yeah. in America yeah. Prior to. Like 1995, 1994. No, I would say I would say 1970s. I would say prior to the 1970s, there was not that image of black people in America. That's pretty silly, Andrew. I mean, like, 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 like I mean, you explain. Like that, 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 I think before the war on drugs and before the uh, explosion of drugs you know what, in America, man? it might be in the something 80s, to that now, man. I, think I, about I, it. Well, think about guys, it. There the wasn't drug dealing in the neighborhoods well, like well, that. I'm not talking about drug, drug dealing. Forget about drug dealing. But, no, well, wait, no, 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 do not remove things from the argument, man. Keep it 100. What I said. Watch the movie 13th and tell me if you would disagree with me based on those years. Listen, I'm talking about the perception of black men in America mm-hmm. 
as, as, being, as being criminals, criminals, or, drug dealers, right, and murderers. So, so, so war, on drugs. Say this, war, war on drugs started that, right? Right. No, war no, no. on drugs started that. The music reflects the war on drugs. The music is what gets outside of the community. Everybody in the community knows what's happening in the community. But some white people that live in the middle of fucking nowhere, Minnesota, but they're listening to rap music, and their only observation of black people is through no, rap music. No, 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 no. I have to take that back. I have to take that back. Because during slavery, it's not, it was a perception that black men were rapists. That's what Brooklyn Nation wait, 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 perpetuated. Know, wait, wait, if, you, if you watch real 13, quick, if, you, quick, if you watch let, 13, let me just a lot of the things that were put in... We didn't say rape, though. We didn't say rape, whatever. Let, let me put no, that... No, we just, I said, no, I said criminality. All I'm not talking about... All I said were drugs. I'm not the crime. I said, all I said were drugs... No, I, all I said was talk about the music. I don't know any rappers that are out there rapping about how they rape chicks all the fucking time. Actually, oh, you out of your mind. Rich homie Kwan said. Rich homie Kwan said. Rich homie Kwan said. A bunch of bad bitches in the room. I'm a rape. Why are we talking about Lil Wayne right now? If we have people that are saying they're going to rape women in the fucking lyrics, what are we having wait, this wait, conversation wait, wait. You remember, for? Y'all remember the Rick Ross? The, you ain't even know. Put a Molly in a drink. She ain't even know. No, That's yeah. rape, dog. Listen, well, he listen, didn't say he going to fuck her hey, after. Shout out to the NPC. Listen, 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 shout out listen, to the NPC. Yes, man. Listen, 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 listen. This is very important. This is very important what I have to say. Go, go. It's very important. The man trying to get us killed out here, bro. Man, I need you to listen. What up, Amin? Amin, NPC. The trio. NPC. Man, this is a very important point I'm about to make. I sit back and read like cat in the hat. 21 Savage, the cat with the max. 21 Savage, not boys in the hood. But I pull up on you, shoot your ass in the back. Do a little, hurt these niggas some rats. Pockets full of cheese, bitch, I got rats. Hey, I'm a real street hey, nigga, bitch. I'm not one of these hey, niggas thinking on whack. Hey. Pussy niggas love sneak this until I pull up on them, slap them with the fire. Wet your mama's house, wet Damn, your we grandma's shoot. house. Keep shooting till somebody die. I love 21 Savage. Can you Savage. imagine what, hey, Jesus you, Christ. Hey, Andrew, can you imagine what a hell you would be in? If your memory was suffering and the only thing you could remember it's was 21, 21, 21 Savage <laughs> lyrics. <laughs> so, you know, what are you going to do today? Uh, 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 hey, 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 like the only thing you can up. remember is what 21 Savage. Hey, <laughs> what if I get our time as early and that's all I can do is be 21 Savage? Don't savage, 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 savage why you trapping so hard. All you can remember is 21 Savage lyrics, man. Why these niggas capping so hard? By the way, we did 21 Savage made his TMZ did. No, for what? He did. He came on. Um, it, we got him out, um, and he, he was driving the the Ferrari that Drake gave him. Uh huh. But we talked about like how he was kind of in the middle of the Drake and Meek Mill thing. Yeah, because he was on both of their albums. He was on both of their albums. Yeah, yeah. He was on the um the Scooty bike or whatever with Meek Mill riding behind him or whatever he calls yeah. him flat for that so he made it's, it was just funny to hear Harvey walk through the average walk through the office and go I need someone to put 21 Savage in the post right now I want to do 21 <laughs> Savage it's like shit he really has made it bro he, he's blowing up by the way he killed his verse on Meek Mill album yo Meek Mill album is very good Charlamagne's hating on Meek Mill's album he really is Charlamagne is hating on Meek Mill's album I like Meek's album no, no, no you I said like you, were, you said it was eh you went to the Drake no concert. I said it was decent like you got like four records on there I really really like the only reason I give Meek Mill an eh is because when Meek Mill is being like very uh, introspective mm -hmm. and he's like really detailing his life like yeah. shine I love it when he's doing like stuff like Tony's story that's dope but after a while all that money talk gets redundant man like and I get it you know you 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 a kid from the hood who was poor and disenfranchised and now you got money so you celebrating it but after a while that money talk gets redundant man I, I, I mean the flow is redundant like he's been riding that flow for yeah. the last 10 years yeah, like the versatility yeah he, we need a new flow from him it's fun and it's exciting on certain tracks but the flow is definitely getting old but that song with fucking Tory Lanez Liddy. dude Liddy is Liddy incredible shine dope song Blue Note I don't know if you guys can talk about this because, like, you know, same podcast family and stuff like that. Did you guys hear him with tax? Of course. I haven't heard it yet. Never heard it. I listened yeah. to it on the way over. Charlamagne, what I you thought? To it. I thought it was a, I thought it was a solid interview. Um, I mean, of course, there's a few things I would I would have challenged them on, only because I feel like, you know, like like me. Meek, Meek started the whole situation with Drake. Like a lot of things that he said, as far as like with social media. When he was like, you know, people on social media, they say things, blah, blah, blah. Like, like, he was one of those guys, you know? Like, he was one of those guys who would go on these Twitter rants, and, and it just so happened that, you know, Drake, Drake came back at him. And it's not even, that Meek and Drake situation is not complicated. Meek said something, Drake responded with music, the music was dope, Meek didn't respond, Meek lost the battle. 
Mm-hmm. Simple as that. And then mm-hmm. the internet jumped all over him and did the memes and all that other kind of crazy stuff. But Meek still got fans. But I mean, I like, listen, man, I like what Meek represents. I like what he stands for. I like the fact that he holds his team down. I like the fact that he cares about his community, that he cares about his hood, that he cares about putting real information in these kids' heads. Like, I like a lot of the things he stands on. I just, I do. Yeah, I think that there's a little bit of hypocrisy uh, hypocrisy in it that's kind of annoying for me. You know, like Meek is talking about shooting people and got fucking guns and all this shit. And then as he drops a, a conscious line like, but, the you know, the police at war with us. And it's like, yeah. have, have you listened to your album? Do, I ain't gonna the hardest thing he said in that back to interview to me was when he said that God took Beanie Siegel's voice from him. I was wow. like, whoa. Yes, yeah, that was hard. Like, that was hard. He, that was fucking... he gave Beanie a bar. Yeah. Like, Beanie, like, that right there was, that was a back-to-back he a couple, bar. He, came, he said a couple of things that I, that I was fucking with. One thing that he said was like, you know, when people were coming at him, uh, hey, listen, you, you you get a guy on and you let him talk. You're gonna find some things that you agree with them. You know, it's just gonna sound like a human being. You know, it doesn't really sound like a human being when you're rapping, shouting on the mic. But if you let a guy talk, he's gonna sound like a human being. He said uh, people were making fun of him uh, about the Nicki Minaj situation, about just kind of like being subservient to her or whatever you whatever you would would say about that. And he was like, I really don't understand that. Like where I'm from, that's kind of what you wanted. That's like, what we all want. All right, like, come on, man. He was like, I, no, no, I get it. He's like, he's like, how is that bad? He goes, I got one of the baddest chicks. We, she making four hundred fifty thousand dollars a show. I'm making a hundred thousand. What you want me to be like with some starlet, some Instagram chick or something I'm like that? I'm not like, mad at that. I agree like, with like, him one hundred percent. I agree with that. He's like, how is it wrong that like, how is it bad? Like that shows you. Yeah. And this is what he said. He goes, that shows you that a lot of y'all. Like grew up in some type of suburban type of situation where you never really dreamed. Like if you dream, you dream of having a chick like Bro, a Beyonce how many or something sketches, like that. How many sketches and jokes have been made about people wanting to get with Oprah so they could be a kept man? Yeah, Word. he got with Oprah. Right. He got with Oprah, who's skinny and got a fat ass. Word up, me got him a me got him a in shape Oprah. But he exactly, got literally. But the whole wow. world when Drake dropped those bars was like, oh, he dating a chick that's more on than him, that's better than him. You know who else is dating a chick that's more on than him? Jay Z. Jay Z yeah. is dating a chick that's more on than him. Mm. Now she ain't as much more on sure. as Nicki is. Jay Z is cheating on a chick that's more on than. <laughs> that's fucking ballsy right there. I don't know if Meek's got his dick out in other girls uh, in Philadelphia. Meek can't do that, man. Yeah, you can't. You're not on Jay's level to cheat yet. Meek, Meek, <laughs> Meek can't do that, man. Yeah. Like, Meek texting 10, 15 times a day. If you get to Dream Chasers eight, maybe you maybe, can. Maybe, maybe you can get some pussy on the side. But you know, yeah, Meek, but you see, you see Jay Z now. Jay Z dressed up like Ken for Halloween. And got you didn't see that he dressed up as who he they, they did Ken. Ken and Barbie and Jay Z got roasted on 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 Twitter today. No, yeah, you did know he that do was white corny. face. You know that was corny though. You know that why that was corny why they did that roasting Jay Z. He's <laughs> a grown ass man with his wife and his daughter. It's yeah, Halloween. That shows me that you behind on your child support. If yeah, you roasted, like who are you, you niggas? That, man, who are you niggas that are upset man, because a man is. Is, is participating with his family and Halloween. Your child support because he's doing something, he, 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 playing with his little daughter on Halloween. Yeah. You roasted him. Now the visual, if you look at the visual, it looks mad corny when you first look at it. <laughs> For some reason, Combat Jack made it his Twitter his Twitter profile picture. Why? What he say? He's just like I, mean, I don't think Jack, I don't think Combat Jack said anything wrong about Ho. I don't think he would, but like. If you look at it like Hove as the Kins all, it was mad corny looking when you first saw it. And I didn't man, know what it's it was. Halloween. I know, I know. It was he's supposed funny. to look corny. It was funny. He's supposed to look corny, but he was playing with his daughter, man. You gotta love that, bro. I love Dad Z. I like to see Jay Z come up, man, because you look at somebody who actually evolved and um and who didn't stay the same and who gives you people talk about why Pac or why Big is the greatest rapper. Really, the greatest, most successful figure in hip hop is Jay Z. And it's not even close. It's not even close. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You think that Jay Z is more successful than? <laughs> oh, everywhere I go, I keep stopping with people. I keep stopping with people. Oh, oh, I ain't with that shit. Oh shit, I've been shot in the nigga. Oh, oh, hundred shooters with me. Oh, oh, DBS on me. Oh, oh, DBS on me. Bling, bada the boom, bada the bang. This motherfucker said, bada the boom, bada the bang. Who's hitting that car? Put them drums in them cars. 
the phone. Oh, 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 21 Savage is my kind of ignorant now, let me ass. ask you this question. If 21 Savage started making like serious uh, statements about Black Lives Matter, how would you feel about that? You know what's so funny? He actually, if you watch the interview he did with the Breakfast Club, it. he's a conscious guy. Like, I mean, I'm, he's, he's conscious, not in a, he's not a politically conscious he way, but a just in a, on his a hood conscious <laughs> way. <laughs> he's a conscious guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now, Yo, you know what's so funny? And I said this before. Let me ask, a, yeah. The same feeling I get around 21 Savage is the same feeling I get around Hillary Clinton. Dick talk. I'm gonna tell, 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 tell you why, and then I gotta go because I'm tired. But listen, right. we are 21 too, Savage. Stop I know like you got places to be. We got places yeah, to be. You got shit to do. Like you yeah, but y'all go. on the West Coast. It was early out there. Yeah. yeah. I know. Guy, I know. I know that 21 Savage has done some bad things, but I think the core of him is a good person, and I think that he eventually does want to do well in the you future. You sound like he a baby mama. He even said that in the interview. He's gonna be better. You don't really know yeah, him. You don't get my baby. You don't know him. Everywhere I go, I keep a chopper. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I ain't with that this song shit. I've been done shot a nigga. Whoa, whoa. Hundred shooters with me. Whoa, whoa. Yes on me. Look, whoa, whoa. If yes on me. Blame. All I'm saying is if you do music, right, where all you're saying is I'm intimidating and I'm menacing. You can't in the same breath go, why do they think that I'm intimidating and I'm menacing? That's fair. And if you support and are, are, are rapping and you try to dress like, and we're all fucking, uh, we're all guilty of this shit because I've been supporting, I've been listening to rap my whole life and I love it. Yeah. But if we're supporting and making this thing popular, we're also making a sentiment popular. Okay. That's true. And when we make a sentiment popular, we can't be surprised if that sentiment is I'm menacing and intimidating. We can't be surprised if people think that you're menacing and intimidating. Yeah. Um, That's what I'm saying. If, and we're guilty of it as 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 people who are, are supporters of the music. Every one of us is guilty of it. Listen, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. What, 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 I, what I think that I would like to see is that then everyone who purports everything that they are, I, I think that... You're, you're, we're painting things with a broad brush. There's no way to disagree. First of all, there's no way to disagree with what you just said. Mm -hmm. And I think that we 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 have to maintain uh, the 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 culpability as far as that's concerned. But let's make sure that we hold the people who are saying that they're menacing and intimidating responsible for being menacing, menacing and intimidating, and not holding me responsible for it. Absolutely, because, because I've never said that I've of course menacing and intimidating. Of course, so, of course, so but that's going to reflect you as well. Like for example, like do you? Well, think, why doesn't it reflect? Let me give you an example. But do you think that do you think that uh, more Asians know uh, martial arts than uh, white people? I have no clue, dog. I for real. There was a point in time the, in my in life when I was younger. In the world or honest, in America? There was a point in time. <laughs> I, 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 son, like, I mean, why like, are you like, pussyfooting around and shit? You know Asians know karate, yo. Not, you know they all know karate. In the, in the world? Stop asking. Like, like, no, you are not, acting like you don't think Asians what, know karate actually, right now. I think more white people in America you, know karate. Van is the worst, yo. No, Van no, really no, the no, worst. Van is going to sit in this room with me right now and act like he doesn't think every Asian knows some form. Man, growing up, I thought every Asian, I thought every Every no, Asian wait, let Charlamagne say this. Wait, let, let Charlamagne say this. <laughs> oh go, 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 Charlamagne. Go. Growing up, I thought every Asian knew karate. Of I thought course, that was we all did. Up. We thought that was part growing of the shit. So, listen, listen. Well, people are growing, growing up, up. I thought the kids. I thought girls had babies out their assholes. Vince, like, stop like, it. Like, like growing I never up. thought that, <laughs> but I thought Asians do some motherfucking bro, bro, taekwondo. Bro, bro, growing up, but like right stop now, it. if you ask me, stop Van it. Lathan, stop at thirty six, I'll tell you right now. I think there's probably more white people in America. Yeah, but you're just saying nonsense. Arts. You have to understand. Like, Wait, you don't think that there's so many okay, Van, white Van, stop it, stop it, stop it. We all know <laughs> that for a fact. When we were younger, we thought all Asians knew fucking so Not only did I think all Asians knew karate. Karate. Yeah. Every movie I saw, it was an Asian teaching somebody who wasn't Asian karate. karate. Exactly. Miyagi taught Ralph Macchio. Somebody else shit. taught an Asian you. taught Bruce Leroy. 
Like well, we don't you, oh, real, don't don't you, real don't quick, Van, Van, Van. Okay, we'll get, back, we'll get back. We'll get back. We'll, we'll get back to that in a second. Like we'll get back to the in a second. My point is, if it's completely understandable for us to think that all. Two fucking billion. Well, let me finish. Kids. Let me finish. All uh, uh, Asians know karate. We can't be surprised when there are people who don't interact with black people outside of hearing gangster rap music and seeing movies where they're portraying gangster characters if they have similar sentiments towards black people. We can't act like, because we're all going to sit, and if you ask no, if you ridiculous. ask black people, I guarantee if every black person is listening to the podcast right now, I want you to message us right now when you were younger and if you thought Asians knew karate. Okay, so here's the deal. Or, or some type here's of taekwondo deal, deal, or some shit like that. Though. I think that, like, and, and Charlemagne was, was mm-hmm. guilty of this earlier this week, talking about, you know, all the things we accepted for Tupac and stuff like that. I I think that I accepted a lot of stuff from Tupac when I was 15, when I was really listening to Tupac. I think a lot of that shit now, and you know this for a fact, I think a lot of that shit was lame and it turned out bad. I do not think that it is realistic right now to think that all Asians know karate. I think that when you're a grown not ass all, person, just a larger you percentage, should, when you're a grown ass person, you should know that Van. a lot of the martial arts that we celebrate in America mm-hmm. originate from there, but not every right, Asian you meet. You're in a parking Timothy lot. Timothy DeLaghetto you're in can't a do a lot. backflip. Yeah, I mean, I would, I, would, I would almost guarantee that more others know karate in America than Asians, because simply because the oh, population. No, so, no, so, but that's so, populate, so, now, so now we're, we're getting back is, to percentages again. No, I don't want to get into this fucking argument. This is all I'm trying to say to you, Van, is this. You're in a parking lot. You bump shoulders with an Asian man. That Asian man puts one one foot back, okay. puts both of his hands in the air, not right. close fists, right? <laughs> they're, they're open, like they're slapping motion open, right? right? Yeah. And squats slightly. <laughs> Whoa. Well, do you he's... think he's going to... No, 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 no. Do you think that what motherfucker... If that Asian man, what if that Asian man goes into a, a pose and goes, last name, savage bitch, you know I'm not praying. <laughs> Hit her with no condom, had to make her eat a plan. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Listen, you you tell me right now, an Asian guy oh goes back, right, touches his wrists together, right, and then goes, right. ah, you can. Right. You're not a little scared a fireball is going to come out of his hands. Not, not even a slightly little bit scared. I would not be afraid if a white guy did that. I'd not be afraid if a Puerto Rican did that. Or if a, or, or if a black dude did that. Chi if and, a, and, and shoot shoot an official real Asian dude does a drop back, puts it by his hip, balls up his hands by his hip, and goes, Ah, you can. I'm going to I'm gonna duck. I got you, dog. I'm going to duck. Or I'm going to do that little block motion. All right. You gonna do hey, I'm getting little... the fuck out of here. All right, yeah. dog. We are too, man. All right. All right. Close it up, Charlamagne. So listen, man, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple motherfucking idiots who don't know no karate, but we love 21 Savage, (laughs) you're right, too. (laughs)